Undefeated's meet in an exciting Week 3 Saturday showcase under the lights here at Ashland Community Stadium. Where familiar foes Crestview and East Knox match up for the first time since a dramatic playoff showdown in 2019. And we're expecting another thriller here tonight when the Cougars and Bulldogs square off for the right to be 3-0. It's streaming live and free to your smartphone, tablet, TV, or PC. And it's coming your way next. Kissel's Lawn Care. There's no job too big or too small for us to handle. With top-of-the-line equipment, we are guaranteed to complete your next landscaping job efficiently and professionally. A hard-working, dedicated team is what we take pride in, bringing to every job to make sure the results are the best they can be. So the next time you have a landscaping project that needs done, think smart and think Kissel. Knox Community Hospital delivers with three fellowship trained surgeons and coveted national rankings for four years running, all to help you beat the pain and heal faster. At Knox Community Hospital, we're elevating care. Hi, this is Brock Ross from the Danville office of the Kilbuck Savings Bank, and I want to wish the Danville Blue Devils all the best for a great season. And this is Dee Scott from the Apple Valley office of the Kilbuck Savings Bank, and I'm here to wish the East Knox Bulldogs an awesome season. We may root for different teams, but we are together in our efforts to service the financial needs of our neighbors and friends in the Knox County area. Supporting our community is even more important today. So contact me, Dee Scott, at the Apple Valley office. Or me, Brock Ross, at Danville. The Kilbuck Savings Bank, your community partner, Equal Housing a member of the IC. Oh, it was exciting, obviously. Uh, you know, the great thing is my son was there, was there as well, so he drove up from Columbus for the game. And uh, but it was freezing. Uh, that was one of the big things. And you know, all year I, I don't wear sleeves for the most part. And I remember telling my son grab my jacket because I was cold in pregame. Um, but when you came out after and, and heading to the field, the adrenaline took over, and um, all of a sudden I was sweating. And so I took the jacket off and I was back to no sleeves, and it was right back to normal. And, um, but it was one of those, you know, you knew it was going to be a hostile environment playing on the road in a playoff game. And, and, and in their stadium is a great environment uh, uh, for that. I thought, you know, the fans are right on top of the field and it was loud. And um, so similar playing games like you would at like Clear Fork. So uh, it was uh, pretty exciting. Uh, I think the whole day I was really like a, like a nervous wreck because like our like actual third receiver was out. You know, he was at vacation and they told me. Hey, next week you're gonna be uh, you're gonna be getting some snaps in the game. And I was like, it was kind of like an oh crap moment because you know I 
was a sophomore, I wasn't really prepared for that. Thursday, Harvard gave a speech, I think really, I set the tone that, you know, he, if I had a title, I'd say, why not us? And it was just kind of, you know, talking about why can't we, you know, why can't we make the deep push? Our region was wide open that year. Um, you know, these guys ended up going to the final four, I believe. And, uh, you know, they wake up, they put their pants on just like we do. So that kind of set the tempo for just the whole week. And then uh, it was one long bus ride to Howard. And it was, I think I actually though, ended up falling asleep. I just kind of was exhausted all week long, mentally, physically. We get there and there's a sign in our locker room that says, hey, Chris, you tell your girlfriends you'll be free next week. And uh, just kind of just set the tempo from right there. We knew it was gonna be, you know, a heavy, two heavyweights throwing hands. And, uh, it, and it turned out to be everything we expected. You know, when we were driving um, down and before that, I had talked with my coaches and threw it out there. If we did score, do we want to go for two? Um, you know, obviously it's a risky thing because obviously the extra point ties it and, and you're okay, but we were on the road too. So that kind of th thought process went into mind. Um, Coach Keener had reminded me there was still a lot of time left on the clock and, and I felt that was that was correct. So we didn't, we went for the extra point. Unfortunately, it was blocked, but uh, you know, we was a mentally strong team and uh, defensively, uh, you know, we just had to go out and do what we did all year is get stops and uh, they, I don't think, I didn't see frustration on them. They may have been, um, but they strapped it up and, and came out and forced a punt and give, at least gave us a shot with just under three minutes ago. There was a couple, I think a couple times in that drive, we were actually in fourth down. And I thought, you know, it was, our backs were against the wall, even from the get go. We were one of very fast scoring offense, very methodical. Uh, we wanted to run the ball down your throat. Um, and it was, so we, I, to me, I felt like we did not match up well against the situation we were in. Uh, but everyone responded, everything fell our way. Uh, great drive, we put a great drive together, some great play calling. And uh, we get down, we're able to spike it with 0.3 seconds left on the four yard line. And we missed, we, you know, missed that extra uh, that field goal. In my mind, I don't know, it didn't sit in yet, my season was over. That was kind of once I had to walk off the field, you know, once I talked to the parents and my, you know, the fans and everything. And uh, that was probably the hardest part when it hit. Like, hey, you know, I won't be on another one of these in pads. Um, so that, that, was, that was tough. You know, I think realistically it's just another game, you know, another game we have on our schedule. You know, I'm not doing these guys any differently, other than the fact they might be a little bit better than the past two teams we played. But other than that, yeah, they're just another team. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, we have a lot of respect for East Knox, uh, and a lot of it's because of this game, but Coach Reese does a very nice job. Uh, their kids are well coached. That's why we put them on our schedule. Um, you know, we want to play teams that are going to push us to get us better, especially in non-conference gets ready for our league. Um, and also to, to for that playoff run, um, and so that that's the exciting part about it, uh, you know. But it is you know and it is week three. It's not week eleven, and um, you know we're going to do what we can. And you know it's different personnel, it's different year, different teams. Um, but you know I expect that it's going to be two well coached teams that are going to be trading punches, and um, I'm sure it's going to be an exciting football game, and we'll see how the outcome comes. with big hopes for the 2021 season are just about set for action as our week three Saturday feature on the OH Report begins right now. Good evening, folks, and welcome to Ashland Community Stadium on a beautiful night for some high school football. My name is Brian Skronsky alongside Garrett Parlett tonight. And what an amazing setup for tonight's game with that excellent hype trailer that you helped produce, G-Man. And truly, what an amazing game in the 2019 playoffs between the Cougars and Bulldogs the last time these two teams met. So this is the rematch, and we're certainly looking forward to it. What was it like, though, reliving that experience with the Cougars coaching staff and then some of the players that were involved? Yeah, the Crestview players and personnel—they they they really said that it wasn't they they aren't out for revenge per se, but I mean 
I know deep down that game is definitely itching at them, and they want to get out here and they want to prove who they are. But now you got to remember, this is two this is two different teams now. This is two different personnel. That was a few years ago. Crestview coming off, of course, a playoff berth, and East Knox a great team as well. So we're going to see really it's going to be a heavyweight fight again, Brian. If if the game lives up to anything close to what it was in 2019, then it's going to be a great game. And while this is technically the first home game of the season for Crestview, you know, they're not that far from home, but this isn't their stadium that they're accustomed to playing in. So do you see this as more of a neutral site and a venue that would favor, say, East Knox coming on the road? Or does this feel like a home environment tonight for the Cougs? Well, coming out of the tunnel, it's not going to be the exact same of walking out and seeing, you know, everybody there at the fan base. But the Cougar Nation has really showed up well. They're starting to pile in here late, right before the game tips off. So, uh... I don't know if it's going to be a different environment. I think the biggest test is going to be on turf. Crestview's never really played on turf that much, and now being on turf, we're going to have it next year as well. So they got to adjust quick, but I think Coach uh, Haverdale and his speed players, they're going to adjust to it pretty well. Yeah, same thing for the Bulldogs. Their home turf surface, of course, is not turf. They play on natural grass as well. So we'll see if that becomes a factor here tonight. And personnel-wise, both of these teams loaded with speed, G-Man. So you imagine that we're going to see some points popping off on the board tonight, some dynamic playmakers and some signal callers as well. Well, let's go ahead and jump into the keys of the game, and we'll break it down for you folks, let you know what we are anticipating here tonight, what could lead to victory for one side or the other. So, G-Man, we'll let you take it away, man. But what are you seeing out there that could decide this thing? Well, Crestview, I think it's get the ball to the speed players. Uh, Addison Raymer is a dominant wide receiver, big play wide receiver. Only four catches, but Brian, for 150 and three scores, man. This guy can okay. burn you over the top, and Gabe Smedley as well. He had a 58-yard touchdown pass last week. And, of course, get it to Connor Morse. This guy is a beast, 29 rushes for 249 and five scores. He leads the team in carries and also 9.6 yards per carry. Every time he touches it, Brian, he's almost getting a first down. So East Knox, they got to stop the Crestview rushing attack. And I think for the Bulldogs, they got to force Hayden Kuhn on comfortable they got to force some interceptions and force some turnovers Hayden Kuhn has not turned the ball over yet this season Kuhn hasn't turned it over neither has the signal caller on the other side Peyton Lester so to me that could be the big factor here tonight forcing turnovers which quarterback is going to give it up and turn it over to the other side for the first time all season could be key and who comes out victorious tonight. But the matchup that you're going to keep your eyes on all night long, how about Caden Sloan, the nose guard of East Knox, I believe a three-year starter this season, going up against the freshman. Yeah, Brian, this guy is an experienced veteran. Caden Sloan, I believe, was on that 29 team starting as well. So he is a dominant force in the middle. And Gavin Barker for Cressy, the freshman. It's going to be senior versus freshman, experience versus unexperienced. Who's going to get it done? Cressy's going to have to get it out wide and get it quickly out there to try to avoid Caden Sloan and try to gas him out, use some hurry-up offense. So that's your keys to the game presented by J&F Construction and Development, Inc. As both players out on the field and excited to run out. And that's one of the best parts. My favorite parts about high school football is setting the scene. When you run out onto the field, I love the American flags that Crestview is sporting tonight. East Knox in the past, we've seen that they like to represent carry out a couple of flags as well. Just nothing quite like that. The roar of the crowd when you come sprinting out for the first time in front of the fans. And here they come, the Cougars, for the first time for a quasi home game here at Ashland, out onto the field, representing the red, white, and blue. Can't go wrong there. Definitely not, Brian. And here they come. They're going to come through. The Bulldogs proceed with caution banner here. So Crestview got the hype, and they're ready to go here, Brian. A lot of people on the staff and on the, on the personnel are very confident in their ability to be able to pick up a win tonight. But East Knox, man, they're a tough team, and they rep represent the KMAC Conference pretty well. It's a Bulldogs team that's been on a bit of a roll here over the last couple of seasons. Of course, everybody got to go into the playoffs last year. Six wins for the Bulldogs, and then that awesome record-setting 2019 season that we touched on already in the pregame hype. 13 wins for them. They went all the way to the Final Four. They still have a few carryover players that were a part of that roster, but some other kids that are now all grown up that were sophomores too, including Peyton Lester, who we think is going to be a dynamic playmaker here tonight, along with Shane Nepp, Carson Steinmetz. I really like that trio right there in the passing game. Looking forward to seeing what the Bulldogs can do against a really nice secondary of Crestview. And these are some newer players too, G-Man. So I, I think that also might be kind of a match up to watch some of the younger Crestview guys out in the secondary who have performed really, really well through two weeks against a veteran 
wide receiver core and a senior quarterback. Yeah, both teams coming in and really haven't played very experienced competition. Tonight is really going to be the biggest test for each team who will remain unbeaten. For, but, Brian, as you mentioned, for East Knox, Peyton Lesser, man, he is on a roll. He's got 451 and six touchdowns. And the best thing about it, about it is he has no turnovers, no interceptions. All he had that scoop fumble for a touchdown. But what you want your quarterback to be is an extension of the coaching staff on the field, and that is exactly what Peyton Lester is. He gets his team in and out of the huddle and does it with great tempo. And then on the other side, the junior Hayden Kuhn going to be making his third career start tonight. You already mentioned he himself has not turned it over. Five touchdowns, no picks, and he's thrown for over 330 yards so far. Only 17 attempts up to this point, but that's something the that coach Haverdell told me before the season started that they were anticipating doing. They got a lot of good, solid running backs. We're going to see a stable tonight for the Cougars as they're going to start with the football, and we are underway here at Community Stadium with Crestview setting up shop at the 38-yard line on the return there from Tanner Moore. And you want to talk about speed, that is a track guy that if he gets out to the edge, boy, you better just throw up the deuces because he's going to burn you. He's going to be gone. That's exactly what you're That's exactly what you're looking for out of Tanner Moore, too. Once he gets the outside, Brian, you have got to get bodies on him, force him to the boundary, and get him out of bounds because he gets an open space, man. He's going to deliver. That kid is a track star. As you mentioned, he is always competing for state titles in track and field. On first down. It's going to be a heavy set here for the Cougars. Lone receiver down to the near side is Gabe Smedley, 6'2 senior. And looking that way right away is Kuhn. He's got the completion. And a pickup of a few on first down. Looks like the Bulldogs were anticipating run right there. They had the off coverage. No press right there for Gabe Smedley, but take a look at the offensive starters, Brian. Hayden Kuhn starting under center. Morris, you mentioned he's been such a workhorse so far. Bolin going to be leading the way for him. Smedley and Moore on the outside. Barker is your tight end. And then a pretty nice staff up front. The five guys along the offensive line been doing a nice job so far as Kuhn starts off his night two for two. And the Cougars already breaking into Bulldog territory. Looks like they're going to call that one, Brian, incomplete. Looks like he did drop it, but here's the replay. I thought he might have got it inbounds and then got out of bounds, but no, ball did definitely fall out of his hands. But on that play, Brian, Caden Sloan was in the backfield almost immediately and forced Hayden Kuhn off to the right side. So a little bit of a wake-up call for Gavin Barker here early in the first quarter. It's almost like a human smelling salt for him, like, okay, it's <laughs> right. game time. I see how this is going to go, and it's going to be third and five here after the drop pass on the boundary as the Cougars bring Raymer in motion. Kuhn. Rolls that way, firing deep, and rising up to make a nice athletic catch was Barker. Beautiful pass right there from Hayden Kuhn, rolling out to his right and hit Owen Barker. Let him get up there and go get it. Looks like he is hurt, though. But Crestview really surprised me here. Three straight pass plays, Brian. No running, so trying to come out here and really set the tone against the Bulldogs. And I love it. You see they come into the game only 17 attempts the entire season up to this point. So the Bulldogs expecting to load up the box. They think they're going to be running at them with this four-headed monster that the Cougars have been displaying through two weeks. And Coach Haverdill, you know, play, playing a little ace up his sleeve here early on in the game. Exactly. Let's see what they do here. See if they go back to the run well. It's going to be twins here to the left side. They're going to run that way. Nice blocking. It's going to set up a decent run. It's going to be about eight yards on the gain. And that there, Connor Morris, the 5'9 senior. Man, Morris pounding ahead. Let's look at the East Knox Bulldogs defensive starters. You already talked about Caden Sloan. Splitting out around him is Householder and Burwell at the linebacker spots. We've got Steinmetz, DeLauder, the sophomore, Dustin Springer, and Kimball on the inside. And then Shane Nepp, Lester, a couple of the safeties back deep for the Bulldogs. Both of them, some great playmakers. Nep, the leading pickoff artist right now in the KMAC through just two games as the flag flies the first of the night. And this is going to go against Crestview. So what was going to be second and short is now going to become about second down and eight here for Coon and company. Not what you want for Crestview. You don't want to get behind the change. And they were going doing great on this drive. They're getting ahead of the sticks, but right there shoots themselves in the foot. Let's see what Coach, Kane, Coach Keener and Coach Haverdell draw up here on offense. Cougars break the huddle. Two wide, more up to the top of your screen. And from the pro set, 
Coombe back to pass, back foot hits, and he gets it out right on the hands, but that one is going to be dropped by Moore. I think just maybe took his eyes off the ball, was thinking about running before he secured that thing. Looks like Tanner Moore might have had a butterfinger, Brian, in the locker room before he came out. Right in the bread basket, too. Beautiful pass. Was looking right upfield, trying to get some more yardage, and just took his eyes off the ball and dropped it. See if it ends up costing Crestview here as they're looking to extend the drive. Third down and eight. They need the 29. Play action. Kuhn again breaking the pocket under all sorts of pressure, and he gets cracked in the backfield. That was the lotter, the sophomore, coming through to make the contact. Beautiful play right there from the East Knox defense, applying some pressure and getting getting Kuhn uncomfortable. And that they did right there. It's going to bring up fourth down. I believe Crestview is going to send out the punt team. So you take a look at the replay. The lotter hit him just in time. Though I didn't really see any gaps out there in terms of the coverage. So East Knox had that on lockdown no matter where Kuhn was thinking about going. And this is a tough spot of the field to punt it from. We'll see if they actually do elect to, and they will, trying to pin East Knox deep as this one takes a skip and into the end zone. So the Bulldogs will set up at the 20. And that's that's the tough part about punting from the 37-yard line like that. G-Man only gaining 17 yards here of field position. Right. It's almost as if you would want to go for that, but they had a lot of yards to gain right there. That's a smart decision by Coach Haverdale, but let's see if it works out in his favor, see if his defense is going to stop. But Cressy was moving the ball down the field really well until that false start penalty really set, set themselves back, and that's really where the defense came up for uh, East Knox. And this defense for the Bulldogs has played so well, allowing just seven points per game. And you filled me in. They've only allowed the varsity defense, what, six points all year, right? Yeah, well, only one touchdown. The rest has come from a scoop and score from the other team in the J as soon as the JV's been in. So varsity has been holding their own. They got a tough test against uh, Cressy here tonight, but they stopped them on the first drive, and they're setting up on offense. First pass of the game from Lester is complete to Steinmetz who gets blown up basically before anything was able to develop. Looked like Bryce Perkins coming up, making the stop. Maybe it was Smedley. I think it was Smedley making a nice move right there, cutting off the defender, getting underneath the tackle with some great bend and stuffing Carson Steinmetz in the backfield for a minimal game. Dog spread him out here. Single back set. Lester going to fake it to Delata, roll to his left, sets, fires. And just a bit too tall. Nice coverage on the play by Raymer. Preston, man, they've got some speed in the back end. Addison Raymer, Gabe Smedley. I mean, they're Kading Cunningham, of course. They're all back there. And right here, Lester was looking for the open man. But nice play right there from Barker to get in the backfield. And Addison Raymer would bat that one away. So the Crestview defense, an opportunity to force a three in out here after the short punt. So far, Brian, my biggest takeaway from the last time I seen East Knox last year is that Peyton Lester cut off the long hair, Brian, elected to go with the short hair, so maybe different team, different year here. He's going to run it up the middle and just get sandwiched. T-boned in between a pair of defenders, only picked up a yard on the run, too. We'll see if Lester can shake it off. Certainly going to bring a fourth down, though, in the Cougars' defense. Stood up to the challenge. They've done their job. I think that was Gavin Keynes and Briar Gotzi. Now, gotzi has been out the past few weeks, number 22. I believe he gets in there on the mix. So, big hit from Gotzi as he is back off of injury. Gotzi, one of the seniors out here for Crestview. It's that high end over end kick. Going to take a very favorable Crestview hop from the 43 out to the 40 yard line. And we'll get our second look now at the Cougars offense. Crestview defense went out there in a tough position after the punt. They wanted to go for that and get the field position, but they played their cards right. And now they got the ball on East Knox 40 yard line ready to take it in. Great opportunity for Kuhn in the offense to capitalize off the short field. First down, Morris. You see how he just plants so shifty and able to hit the hole, pick up about four yards on the gain. He's a one cut back, Brian, definitely. Connor Morris, as soon as he puts that right foot in the ground, he's looking to get upfield and get straight to the end zone right here. Plants that right foot, Boom. gets off his blocker, Wade Bolin, who is the fullback with a beautiful out block to force that easy gain for Connor Morris and his team. Morris has mentioned averaging nearly 10 yards per clip through two weeks. 
He's almost got 10 yards on two carries here, but going to be about a yard and a half shy, though, to move the chain. So third down and short on the way for the Cougs. Chris, you getting back to their script, getting back to the run game. They started off that first series with a couple passes. It started to work for them. Then they shot themselves in the foot. Back to the script, and Coach Keener getting back to the running offense. Looks like one-on-one, -on -one, man to man here at the bottom of your screen. And said they keep it on the ground. Morris keeps his feet, dives forward out across the 25-yard line, and a fresh set of downs on the way. And he just lulls you to sleep with these beautiful spin moves, Brian. I mean, gorgeous moves to get through the hole. And even when there's nothing there, he makes something out of it. This is going to take the quick handoff here on the replay. Brought to you by Scout Construction. Just splits defenders and then hits the what? B button, Brian, and then dives forward for the extra yards. He is constantly trying to get as many yards as he possibly can. On first down, Smedley off the jet sweep. Tripped up. Nice tackle on the play there by Lester. But it's another nice start here on first down to make it second and manageable as the Cougars offense looking to break here into the red zone for the first time tonight. See if they like to keep it on the ground and maybe open up the air attack with maybe a little bit of play action. See what Kuhn under center here does. Well, they've got Dylan Moreland locked up man-to-man, -man, one -on one-on-one with Smedley, but it's going to be the running attack. And once again, Morris goes airborne. He's down to the 10-yard line. It's going to be first and goal for Crestview. Tremendous, tremendous blocking up front for the Crestview Cougars. They're really so much more athletic and quick as soon as they get off the line of scrimmage. Now, East, so East Knox has got a lot of size on them, so if East Knox can really bunker down and hold their position, it's going to be uh, hard for Crestview to do so. But so far, Crestview's definitely winning the war of attrition. This is where some of those big bodies really start to come in handy with the field gets a little bit smaller the closer you get to the end zone. But the Bulldogs defense this time able to swallow up the ball carrier. Just nothing there for Morris that time. And that is exactly where they came in the play, Brian. Down in the red zone. It's going to be tough to run on these big boys. He's right there. Blake Elliott is going to wrap up Connor Morris Play for a one-yard gain. Really see if East Knox can set this in and maybe that bend, don't break mentality. See if they can keep Crestview out of the end zone. Only allowed one score so far through eight and a half quarters of action has the varsity D. Crestview looking to change that right here. Morris with a head of steam and he's going to go into the end zone. Crestview strikes first. Just like that, Brian. They go back to the wheel well. Connor Morris dominating so far here in the first quarter alone. And he is on the board for the Cougars with six points. One more look. How about those blocks set up front? And then Bailey, the final one, just gives the shove of the linebacker as the Crestview Cougars take advantage of the short field, getting it into the end zone for an early 6-0 lead. you got to give a lot of credit to Wade Bolin right there on that block. He had the out block that was able to free up Connor Morris right off the left side to walk in the pay dirt untouched. Devin Holloway on for the PAT. It's up, it's through, and Crestview extends their lead 7-0 on our Mazza scoreboard. And uncharted territory now for the East Knox Bulldogs, who have not trailed so far this season. You talked about the level of competition so far against Northridge, 22-8. They were able to take them down, and then week two at Utica, 37-6. The Bulldogs absolutely blitzed them. So this is a good opportunity for them here in their first true test of the season to see what they're made of and how they bounce back mentally after getting hit in the mouth here in the first five, six minutes. And this is exactly what you want to see if you're a coach, Cody Reese. You want to see how your team is going to respond being down 7 nothing and really a big game, a Saturday night game. So we'll see how they are. They're a very well-coached team. Cody Reese, a very good coach. So I think they're going to come out here and respond very well. We'll see how they do against a stingy Crestview defense themselves. Cougars defense allowing just 16 points per game, but make no mistake about it, through a couple of weeks, they have been carried by the offense, almost dropping a 50-burger per night. 49 and a half is what they are averaging. That's a 23 and a half points per game margin so far. So Crestview has really been flexing on the competition up to this point in the season. And you feel like this obviously going to be the first time so far through three weeks that they're going to see, you know, what, what, what a comparable opponent is made of. But... Right now, checking all the boxes are the Cougars off to a nice start. 
doing a great job mixing up the pass and the run. And what they do is they'll run you, run you, run you, and then all of a sudden they'll hit you with a play action and go over the top. All their passes usually come off the play action. And their deep balls, man, Hayden Kuhn is completing. He's got every pass he usually passes. It's over 20 yards, Brian. So let's see if East Knox can respond here and maybe get a seven-burger on the board themselves. It's going to be Carson Steinmeck cutting back across the grain. Gets hit at the 26-yard line and dropped basically right there. Nice open field tackle by Remington Eagle, the junior. Starting offense for the Dogs. And so far, Lester having a sensational senior season. DeLauder, the sophomore, doing a great job too. A uh, ton of touchdowns for him, four of them on the season. Nep, Bonham, and Steinmetz at the skill position. And then a great offensive front as well. I believe they've got a few returning starters across the front line. But so far, Crestview winning that battle of the trenches. Crestview's got a very solid D-line across the board. They're very athletic and very quick. They're not the biggest guys, but, man, they get off the line of scrimmage very quick. That being Barker, Klein, and Keynes. They've got Bailey, Godsey, and Bowen behind them. And then a lot of speed in that secondary when you're talking about the likes of Cunningham, Morris, certainly more Smedley and Raymer. Second and 10, a man comes in motion. It's going to be Nep. Lester doesn't see anyone open. Now looking for Nep deep, but he's just going to have to pull it down. Nowhere to go with the football. Excellent coverage, and Bullen comes in for the big sack. That is exactly what you call a coverage sack, Brian. There was nobody open. They were looking for the wheel route, wheel route excuse me, down the sideline. You see that replay, man. Crescu is flying to the ball. That was Wade Bullen and Aiden Godsey getting to Peyton Lester. Lester a little bit slow to get off of the turf as well. That's his second big hit that he's taken in as many drives. So the accumulative effect of those, you know, they wear on you throughout the course of the night, certainly at the quarterback position when you're so vulnerable, when you're in a passing situation. And the dogs, of course, they like to air it out. So we'll see if that becomes a factor as the night grows on a little bit longer. Bulldogs going to elect to take their first time out of the evening. Perhaps a chance to let Lester hill up a little bit, give him a minute, talk things over, because sometimes that's really all you need, that initial shock. Your body can kind of tense up on you, and it looked like that was the case for Lester after getting sandwiched there between two of the guys for Crestview. But what a start, man. Crestview off to a great, great-looking beginning to this game, G-Man, doing it on defense so far, haven't allowed much at all to East Knox, and then I really do enjoy what they're doing on offense, very balanced, when all we've seen this season was run, 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 and then they'll try to hit you with the pass, so Coach Haverdell and company, give them some credit for what they've done so far in these first seven minutes. Well, it's a good timeout from Cody Reese. You definitely don't want to, you want to get this first down, you don't want to give the ball right back to Crestview. They got some huge momentum going here in the first quarter. You want to at least Get some yardage here to even pin them back a little bit deeper. You don't want to give this uh, this one up right here so early on your second possession. Third down and 10 from the 26-yard line. Lester from the gun. DeLauder, half step behind him. Peyton looking left. Now comes back to the right. And that throw off target. Tried to hit Blake Bonham on the near sideline. But I really think that it was just kind of an errant throw as Bonham had a bit of a step there. And you see kind of a hitch in the step there of Briar Gotze heading over to the sideline. Not what you want to see if you are a Cougars fan, but here is Peyton Lester. It was sticky coverage from Tanner Moore. He was really all over him. Wobbly ball went out of bounds, sailed a little bit. So East Knox going to punt it away and give it right back to this electric high-flying offense. And Connor Moore is going to take the punt return. Not only just take it with a head of steam, how about that? Breaking his way down to the 24-yard line in the field position for Crestview. Just continues to get better and better with each passing drive. It hasn't even been on the other side of the field so far here, Brian, here in the first quarter. And we only got four minutes remaining. So Crestview definitely winning the field position battle. And let's see if they can get some more points on the board. And Connor Morse, man, what an athlete and what a play right here on the punt return. And that's my favorite part about football is that you don't have to be a big guy. You know, you think of it as a macho sport, but Connor Morris, 5'9", maybe a buck 65. Right. So far, he's the most dominant player in this game. 
First down, big hole. Taking advantage was Bolin as he just jet through the big gap, got down to about the 12-yard line. And that was the fullback right there, Brian. Wade Bowen taking it right up the gut, and Crescio is just dominating up offensively on the offensive line. They're cleaning some easy holes. You could drive some semis through some of those holes, Brian. Crescio right now is really wheeling and dealing. That was Moreland that eventually made the touchdown saving tackle. And it looks like we've got an equipment issue right now with Mason Ringler who's arguing that he doesn't want to come out of the game. I, I think maybe his lid might have popped off a little bit. Mason Ringler started since he was a freshman, now a junior. Definitely one of the better offensive, offensive linemen, excuse me, on the Crestview Cougars. So Carson White, six foot, 210 pound freshman. It's gonna have to fill in for at least a down. And Coach Haverdale, of course, when you got a three-year starter in there, you don't want to make that exchange if you don't have to. So he's pleading his case. But typically, it doesn't matter. I've never seen a coach or a player be able to talk an official out of a decision. Right. I mean, at this point, Coach Haverdale, you should give it up, you know, move on. But, you know, football's a game of inches, man. You could go out here and they could sack him, get a fumble on the same guy. So you never know what could happen. But he's going to plead his case, and I'm sure the ref really is going to change his mind. It's just going uh, one year out the other at this point. Steve still pleading in the Court of Appeals. <laughs> the officials say, you know, we'll, we'll see you in court, Steve. <laughs> so Ringler is going to have to come out for a play. I see him down on the side. He's super upset about it, too. <laughs> Every play matters, folks. Never want to miss any action. First down and 10 from the 12-yard line. Again, they give it to Bolin. That's a big hit. Coming through to knock him down was Nep. Had to submarine him a bit. East Knox now loading the box. They got man on, they got one-on-one -on -one coverage on the outside on Addison Raymer. Wouldn't be surprised if Crestview just gives Raymer, you know, a one-on-one -on -one jump ball on the fade and see if he can go up and get it. Dogs have been showing basically that same look all night long. Cougars up to this point haven't tried to exploit it. And they won't hear. Morris knocked forward across the five-yard line. So it'll be third down. Cougs can extend the drive with a first inside of the two. I think at this point, is just going to go, continue to go to the run game. Seems like they're getting three or four yards of pop. Sure, they're going to go back to Morse or maybe Bowling here and see if they can punch it in for six. Morris, the deep back. He's got the give. And he's going to be real close to the two yard line. They might have to measure this one, G Man. This is about as close as it gets. Looks like. They're going to call it a first down, Brian. No measurement needed. And two nice plays there by Carson White, filling in for Ringler. And I see he's popped off the lid. He's coming over, looking at the cheerleaders, letting them know, hey, baby, I'm a <laughs> freshman getting in there and making some big reps. <laughs> two minutes remaining here in the opening quarter, Crestview. Looks like they're going to take a timeout, but in a great position here to kind of take a stranglehold on this football game. Just two yards away from making it a 14 to nothing competition. And I think you can't ask for anything better. I mean, just the way that things went down in 2019 to come out here and at least get a little bit of that bad juju out of your system, get a couple of touchdowns. This is a, this is a great start for Crestview. Yeah, Crestview so far is off to a great start. You couldn't really... Pick it any better if you were a Cougars fan, up 7-0 and almost about to punch it in here on the two-yard line. But for East Knox, if you're Coach Cody Reese, you got to get to your players. They really haven't been down this season much. you got to let them know, you know, we're all right, we're good. We'll, we'll come back, we'll revamp, and we'll be all right. Just, you know, try to stick through it, maybe see if we can get a stop and force a field goal here. 
Certainly a key defensive stand right here on the way for East Knox. They've got the size advantage. Are they able to hold Crestview out here on a couple of downs and at least make it interesting on third and fourth down and force the Cougars into a decision? Looks like it's going to be a two tight end set on first down. Morris the deep back behind Wade Bolin. And he's Knox with nine guys up in the box. Coon turns, hands off. Morris reaches for the end zone, and he's in there for the second time here tonight. Heck of an effort right there from Connor Morris. So shout out to the Crestview O-line right there, making a huge hole for him to run through, and he reaches out right there to get the touchdown. And here is the replay right there. Nice hole. And Heck of an effort from Connor Morris. That's his second score tonight, Brian, and we're not even out of the first quarter. So East Knox has got to find an answer for Connor Morris in this rushing attack for the Cougars. The Cougar flag flying here at Community Stadium. As the fans here on the home side, Bleachers, enjoying what they're seeing, except for that, that's been a, a rare PAT miss. Well, Brian, Cougar fans might be getting a little bit of flashback from a few years uh -oh. ago. A little deja vu, huh? They did get a PAT blocked a few years ago against East Knox in the playoffs. So a little bit different game, though. They're up 13-0 here, so nothing too much to worry about so far here in the first quarter. And not quite as high of a stakes opportunity right there in the first quarter as the one that went down back in 2019. Not the Cougars fans needed reminded, <laughs> but it, it did springboard East Knox to a historic playoff run for them. If not for that, boy, what, what a disappointment that would have been to end up going 10-1 and one on the season instead of getting all the way to a state semifinal game and you know all the accolades that came along with that for East Knox. So it's kind of crazy how you look back at history and see how one play can really turn the tide in terms of how you think back and the memories that are built and you know what, what a football team can accomplish. Right, as we were talking about a few weeks ago, Brian, we don't know if East Knox will win so far. Maybe if the game was just a blowout, they got a lot of momentum off that game and they really got that that mindset of why not us? Why can't you know a small town uh, school in Howard, Ohio, get it done? And man, I was on that run with them. They took me. A, to multiple different towns, man. What a great team that was in 2019 for East Knox. See what the 2021 20, version is made of here. Trailing for the first time all season as Steinmetz gets out to the 27-yard line. And the offense comes out onto the field for the third time, looking for their first first down so far of the contest. They've really only picked up a couple of yards. Yeah, you definitely got to get something going here on this drive. You, you might not have to get points, but you got to – get the offense going and build some confidence, get some kind of yards down the field, maybe try to pass the 50 to build some of the confidence back in your QB and back into some of your senior leaders because so far, Crestview has been dominating offensively. Three receivers set, two here to the near side. They're going to keep it on the ground, though, to Lauder. Looked like he was going to have a crease, but then a nice tackle there. Aiden Gotti was able to wrap him up down low and bring him down for a gain of about five, but it looked like it could have been a whole lot more. Aiden Gotti, one of the leading tacklers on this Crestview squad, right behind Owen Barker, who leads the team in tackles and sacks, but there definitely was a hole there, but nice tackle right there from Gotti to lay out and wrap up, the, wrap up those legs. Four-yard gain, second down and six. Lester Looked like he was trying to be a little bit cute with the fake there to DeLotter. Dropped the football, but able to pick it up and turn it into maybe a one-yard game, though. East Knox, Peyton Lester, does a lot of off-script plays that really help his team. Gets out of the pocket, can take it off and scramble, and can play make a little bit and maybe hit some receivers down the field who were just streaking wide open. But so far, Crestley's defense has really kept him in the pocket so far and really got to him. It appears so far through the first 12 minutes and three drives for East Knox that they have not went against the secondary that possesses the type of speed that Crestview has out on the field. Not a ton of separation so far for these wideouts. See if they can get some here on third down and four. Lester steps up, fires. He's got his man, but it's not going to be enough. 
Nepp tackled about a two yards shy there. And Gabe Smedley was the one sure open field tackler present, prevented the first down yardage. See what Cody Reese does and his staff. They're going to go for this, Brian, fourth and one. But tremendous offensive line play here for the Bulldogs. They had a clean pocket. Lester had almost all day to throw. Got it to the receiver, but just, just shy of that first down. Let's see if they elect to go for it here on fourth down. But he's going to have this break, Brian, to decide. Fourth down coming up on the other side of this break. So far, it's been all Cougars. They're on top, 13-0. Hi, this is Brock Ross from the Danville office of the Kilbuck Savings Bank, and I want to wish the Danville Blue Devils all the best for a great season. And this is Dee Scott from the Apple Valley office of the Kilbuck Savings Bank, and I'm here to wish the East Knox Bulldogs an awesome season. We may root for different teams, but we are together in our efforts to service the financial needs of our neighbors and friends in the Knox County area. Supporting our community is even more important today. So contact me, Dee Scott, at the Apple Valley office. Or me, Brock Ross, at Danville. The Kilbuck Savings Bank, your community partner, equalizing London. Member of the IC. Knox Community Hospital delivers with three fellowship trained surgeons and coveted national rankings for four years running, all to help you beat the pain and heal faster. At Knox Community Hospital, we're elevating care. Bulldogs are going to punt it, but it's not a good one here to open up quarter number two. Have to take a look at that replay. It came, it looked like right off of the toe and into the back of the offensive line. And surprise, surprise, Crestview's going to start with the ball in fantastic field position. I think Colter Lauder slipped on that one. He, he had all day to really get it off, but maybe thought some of the Crestview defenders were there to block it. He slipped and hit it off his own teammate. And Crestview's in plus field position here once again, Brian, as they go in shotgun. Smedley comes in motion. They fake it to him. Inside give is Morris. Runs into his own receiver, but able to pinball. Gets forward for a gain of a couple more, and it's going to be second down. Just one yard needed after another nice pickup by Morris. And Brian, Connor Morris runs with a full head of steam. He is such a tough guy to get down in. Beautiful misdirection in the backfield. Had Gabe Smedley coming in with the jet sweep, and then Connor Morris with the little counter. So, so far, man, Crestview's rushing attack has definitely been the story of this game so far. Going to give it to Bolin, the big bruiser this time in the short yarded situation. He gets what he needs and a couple of more out to the 25-yard line. They'll move the sticks, and the Cougars offense again on the move. Wade bowling like a bowling ball, Brian, just knocking down pins as he goes and results in a first down in favor of the Cougars. Crestview hasn't put it up through the air in a while after starting the game with three straight pass attempts. But this time they will play action right on cue. Coon looking to the end zone, fires, and it's caught. Touchdown, Crestview. What a big catch by Owen Barker right in the corner of the end zone. Got two feet down and everything. What a tremendous throw and catch. Hayden Coon had him wide open as soon as the play started, but the defender really got back and got Owen Barker once he realized that's who Coon was looking for. And Owen Barker, man, with the jump ball as he is hyped. It's tremendous catch to go over the defender and grab that one. A lot of Cougar pride right now in the stadium. Got to be impressed with what you're seeing from the kids in the black jerseys as Kuhn pumps not once, not twice, but three times. And then Barker goes up over the top of the defender, pulls it in over Moreland for the touchdown. He got two feet in too, Brian. That would have been an NFL touchdown. But tremendous play here from Owen Barker and Hayden Kuhn as he gets another touchdown for his totals. Sixth touchdown pass of the season for Hayden Kuhn. No picks either. So the junior, first year as a starter, things have gone really smooth so far for number five. 
off his back foot too. Jumped on that throw and just threw it up, man. Owen Barker, 6-2-6-3, just throw it up and let the big man go get it. And that's exactly what he did. It's now Crestview up 20 to nothing here early in this game, just starting the second quarter. So East Knox, they've got to respond here on this drive. They've got to get some kind of points on the board. I think definitely a surprise to a lot of our viewers out there and certainly those of you that voted in tonight's fan poll. East Knox at the end of it at 7 p.m. when it closed, 56% of the vote thought that the Bulldogs would be victorious tonight, 44% on Crestview, and still a long way to go. But so far, the Cougars looks like they're proving at least the, the general consensus out there in the public wrong through a couple quarters and a couple of plays. For Crestview, you can't take your foot off the gas, though. East Knox, a very well-coached team, as I've mentioned. They're going to try to get back into this thing. So, Chris, you got to continue to keep, keep your foot on the gas pedal and put up as many points as you can as fast as possible. Holloway's got it teed up. And he'll boot it deep right down the middle. Taking on the hot bind up. Makes a little cut to the outside, showing off some speed as he bursts out near midfield. And that might be exactly what East Knox needs. Just a little shot in the arm, a little momentum. Nice field position here for the Bulldogs to start. Finally, some good field position for East Knox. They're finally not backed up in their own territory. Beautiful return from Nepp. Takes it out to the wide side of the field. So see if East Knox can open up that offense and get Peyton Lester going here. All that I had read over the last couple of days in preparation for this game was about Steinmetz, Nett, DeLauder, and company. Everybody in the passing game, they've been able to have such a versatile attack through the air. Nothing so far has really gone well in the passing game for the Bulldogs up to this point. That's why they keep it on the ground here on first down, and DeLauder got a gain of a few. East Knox, not a team that runs the ball very often, but Cole DeLauder is the workhorse back in the backfield for the Bulldogs. Let's see if Peyton Lester can open up that arm and get it to some of those playmakers, as you mentioned, Brian, because that's really their bread and butter. DeLauder averaging just 3.6 yards per clip on the season. It's been an, even a little bit less than that so far in this contest. As they'll fake it to him, air it out, Steinmetz. Got a block, shifty move. And he's going to be drugged down at the 33-yard line. The biggest play of the night for the Bulldogs right there. And it was a simple one, just a bubble screen out to Steinmetz with beautiful blocking downfield. And then he took Gabe Smedley's ankles, Brian, I believe, at the 35-yard line with a quick hesitation move. So that is some momentum for East Knox to get going in their favor. Beautiful setup, and you're right. Great cut back there on Smedley. Got him doing a little whirly bird. He had to turn his back on him. And now it's going to be first down and 10 for the Bulldogs. Knocking on the red zone for the first time. Lester steps up. Nice move with his feet. Then trying to truck his way through some defenders. But Godsey and company able to bring him down after a minimal gain. Brian, if he had a little bit more time, he had a touchdown down the right side of the field. He had a wide open man running past the defender, but wasn't enough time. See if we can see it here on the replay. Made the double move, had him out there, but pressure was in his face. Had to get it going, so beautiful move to cut up field and like a battering ram, man. He was not scared, took it right in the teeth of the defense. So Lester with that fight for extra yardage at the end of the play, makes it second down and five. As they'll hand it off to DeLotter this time and gobbled up. Right about at the line of scrimmage, might have been able to fall forward for about a half a yard. Tackled on the play by Perkins. So third down for this Cougars defense. Pitching a shutout so far. Would love to put the dogs in a fourth down situation. Quarterback keeper all the way, Lester with the head of steam. Able to pick it up down near the 20 yard line. Seven yard gain on the play. Beautiful play right there and design 
the East Knox Moving Company. Brian up front had a tremendous hole for Peyton Lester to run through, and Cole DeLotter leading the way with the block. And Peyton Lester, man, he is not afraid of contact. He is trying to get as many yards as he possibly can on almost every single run he's been on today. We'll see if he can sustain that, though. Shaking up a little bit earlier in the game. The more hits that you take, the more contact throughout the game. Those bumps, those bruises, they can add up as the lotter's got a big hole here. Puts the head down, dives forward, out near more first down yard. It's going to be about a yard and a half shy. It's like East Knox has finally woke up, Brian. Maybe it took him the quarter to wake up, and now the offensive line is getting some gaping holes for Peyton Lester to sprint through, and this one was cold to lotter following his lead block by Shane Nepp. Just too much speed and athleticism offensively for the dogs to stay down for too long. As they're in the red zone for the first time tonight in DeLauder. Looking like he's gonna move the sticks. It's gonna be a goal to go situation on the way for EK. East Knox giving Crestview a dose of their own medicine now on the ground game and beautiful blocking. In the backfield was Briar Gotze. He is a menace on defense for the Cougars, not afraid of any kind of contact. Was shaking up a little bit, but looks like he's back out there and ready to go. Looks like a jumbo tight formation here for the Bulldogs. Nobody split out wide. DeLotter, the deep back, two lead blockers for him, and he cuts inside. Great decision as he finds a crease and he's able to get down to about the three. Don't usually see a lot of East Knox in the eye formation, but so far they're pounding it down Crestview's throat here in the second quarter. Really went away from the passing game, and it's really been the running attack here on this drive that's got them going, and they might be able to punch it in for six. Bowen took a bit of a free ride there on the back of the lotter for about five yards. Same look here, but this time nothing. Briar Gotze just jet into the backfield. Stop that play before it had a chance to develop. Read that like an open book, book Brian. He just sprinted right through the hole. They, they ran it, I think, two or three times. And he was like, all right, that's enough of that. We're going to get out of that, that formation. And what a beautiful play. Just wow. Almost got to the quarterback and the running back at the same exact time to get both of them. Perfect read on the play that time from the senior. Third down. DeLotter again. Puts his head down, drives forward, and the football about a half yard short of the goal line. So it's going to be fourth down for the dogs, and you know they got to roll the dice here, try to get that six on the board. Yeah, you can't let Crestview stop you here and get the ball back. You got to go for it. Say you don't get it, Crestview's pinned deep all the way on the one. You might be able to force a safety, but this is definitely the right call, play call. Lester turns, hands off, DeLauder trucks his way into the end zone. The Bulldogs on the board for the first time. The East Knox running attack is finally awake as Cole DeLauder had multiple carries on that drive as he just carries defenders into the end zone on that touchdown run. And East Knox is finally on the board, cutting this to a 14-point deficit pending the PAT. Will Jensen with the kick, it is through. Cuts the deficit down to 20 to seven, the Bulldogs. Coming through with a big drive and all set up by that nice return by Shane Nepp. Gave him a little bit of a shorter field. They had been backed up on their couple of previous drives and sometimes that's all it takes, G-Man. Just a little shot in the arm like that. Nepp was able to get him some decent field position and then the offense Standing up to the challenge, getting on the board. Now we got a ball game, just a 13-point difference. Big momentum boost. Let's see if East Knox defense can come out here and slow down the Cougars because that's exactly what East Knox did. They punched it in real quick, and now let's see if the defense can stand up and stand tall and stop this very high-flying uh, Crestview offense. One thing to note, Connor Morris on the sideline right now being treated by one of the trainers. Got shaken up on that last offensive possession. He's so valuable to what they want to do on both sides of the football. Have to keep an eye on number three, but he seems like he's a really tough cookie. Going to take a lot to keep him out of this ball game. That would definitely be a big blow for Crestview if Connor Morris cannot return into this ball game. But as you mentioned, 
going to take a lot to get him out of this game, Brian. Big game for these Crestview kids. They want revenge. Looks like he's going to get taped up and get back out there real quick. So there is Morris getting that right forearm doctored up. And the dog's got it teed up. They'll kick it short here and take it on the fly by Moore. And that long salad blown in the wind only for about 10 yards before the dogs were able to come up, make the stop at the 37-yard line. But again, pretty decent field position for Kuhn and the offense, who have had plenty of short fields to work with so far already through a quarter and a half. See if they elect to keep it on the ground. Got plenty of time to run out this clock and maybe end this second quarter with the touchdown with the time expiring. Kuhn has been so efficient so far. The lone incompletion he's had was a drop ball. So it's at least got to have the secondary of East Knox creeping up, thinking about things as Morris on first down, doing what he's done so far throughout the entire season, picking up big yardage. That's right about as an his average of nine yards. Looks like Crest is going to continue to try to run the ball and run the ball, and then on third down, get that play action going as they did on that touchdown pass to Owen Barker. Let's see if they continue to do so. But East Knox has got to find an answer for this front five of Cressy. They're just dominating up front in the trenches. Second down and a short two here for Crestview. And it's going to be a handoff. A lot of collisions going on inside of that C gap there. It looked like it ended with about a yard, maybe yard and a half gain for Crestview. So it'll be third down and short. And a big play here for both sides. See if the East Knox Bulldogs defense can bring up a fourth down for the Cougs. This will be huge if the Bulldogs will get a stop here and get the ball back and see if they can get a score before the end of the half. Kuhn. Quick handoff, Morris darts to the outside and had the quickness to be able to catch the edge. Picks up a gain of four. As we mentioned earlier, Brian Connor Morris, the one cut back, sticks his left foot in the ground and gets upfield. East Knox almost had him in the backfield, but that left foot, man, cuts it right into the ground, takes it right upfield and gets the first down for the Cougar offense. Morris now coming in and out of the lineup, though, after being shaken up on that previous defensive possession. But this has been kind of the game plan for Crestview anyways. They've got so many guys that they've been able to mix into the backfield that have been productive so far throughout the season. And they're anticipating nothing's going to change here tonight. We'll find out as Kuhn hands it off at the three-minute mark. And that was Gage Bloodheart, one of the bigger backs. Not finding much space that time, though. Chris has got four rushers over 50 yards this season, Brian, and one of them is Gage Bloodheart. He's got 12 carries for 79 yards and a score, so he's averaging 6.6 .6 yards per carry, so not bad for the second stringer. Smedley checks back into the lineup for the second down play. Kuhn fakes, rolling right, looking that way. The pass is a bit low, but a nice catch made by Raymer here on the near side. Tremendous catch right there from Addison Raymer. Go down and cradle that in and not let it touch the ground. Nice throw from Kuhn, too, to keep it away from everybody but his player, but his wide receiver, and tremendous pitch and catch for the Cougars. And on the offensive line there, I like what they did. Roland Mason Ringler out, who's sporting the number 71 now. We're told that it was a jersey issue earlier in the game that took him out of the contest, so no more 77 for Ringler tonight. Morris on third and short. Powers his way for another first down. Chris, you so quick off the ball. The plays happen in the matter of seconds. As soon as they hike the ball, man, they're across the line of scrimmage and ready to go. It looks like they've elected to begin Cutting some of the East Knox players at the line of scrimmage. That wears out some of those bigger guys. So, so far it's working for the Cougars. Crestview a little bit quicker out of the huddle now. 
on short time. 80 seconds remain here in this first half. Play action, Kuhn steps up, gonna tuck it. Now on loads and he's got a man wide open, it's Moore. Cutting back against the grain. Moore to the 10 yard line, knocked down by the Bulldogs but not before a gain of 18. Tremendous play from Hayden Kuhn right there, rolling out to his right with the playmaking ability. Got the defense to suck in and then right over the top to Tanner Moore and he does the rest, man. He's a flash in the pan with that speed and cuts back across the field. Good play right there from Luster, man, not to let him back outside, because if he did, that might have been a touchdown. Did a big pop at the end of the play from Steinmetz. That's Moore, probably the fastest player in this game. But how about Connor Morris? A trifecta in the first half, three times the Pater. The hat trick here early for number three, Connor Morris getting it done for the Cougars as they're up 26 to seven here late in the second quarter. Everything going Crusty's way. And the East Knox defense has to respond because if not, it could get ugly here fast. But how about the response by the Crestview offense? East Knox looks like they're gonna get right back into the game. Nice short drive for them, 52 yards. They get into the end zone. Crestview with the answer on the other end. This time the PAT right down the middle, so bumps the margin back up to 20 points. As the Crestview offense kind of right back on target for what we've seen from them throughout the season, averaging 49 and a half per game. Just no outside contain for the Bulldogs. Connor cuts it out. There's really nobody there to keep up with his speed, and he just gets right into the end zone and celebrates with his teammates. Eight total touchdowns on the season already for Connor Morris, the senior, having a breakout season up to this point. And boy, was he not motivated. He told me after a big week one win at Loudonville that all the talk about graduating the 11 seniors and how's Crestview football going to be this year, hearing people like myself and others in the media saying, we don't really know how good the Cougars are going to be. A lot of unknowns out there, but I think one thing that he felt like they could count on was himself, the senior, stepping up to the occasion. And so far, man, I think he's even been better than advertised, probably even exceeded his own expectations. Yeah, I mean, he's definitely delivered, even just tonight. I mean, he's got three touchdowns, and he's really been definitely the bell cow back for Crestview the whole season. 9.6 yards a carry. I don't think you understand, like, how, how, many, how much yards he's getting per carry. He's almost getting a first down <laughs> every, time. every time he touches the ball. I mean, that is a crazy statistic. And... So far, man, East Knox has not had an answer for Connor Morris. And to think about the fact that it's not like he's had limited touches. He's got about 35 carries on the season now. So when you're right up there about 10 yards per clip, ooh, buddy, things are going well for you in the offense. Holloway boots. This time he kicks it away from Nepp. Nice open field tackle made by the Crestview special team. So short time here for East Knox. It'll be interesting to see now trailing by 20. Do they try to get aggressive? Lester's been great so far during the season, but not so far in this game. The last drive was his best easily. But do they want to air it out here, which is 42 seconds? It's a tough call for Cody Reese and his staff. You don't want to really try to force something and then Crest, you get the ball back with another opportunity to score here on the short field. So looks like they're going to elect to run it and try to get to the halftime break and make some adjustments. It's going to be a toss to the lotter trying to catch the edge, but he will do no such thing. Tackle low by Moore. Crest, you defense is just swarming to the ball. Multiple defenders, Owen Barker right there, not only getting it done on offense, but also on the defensive end. Gets around the offensive lineman, the offensive tackle, and makes a tackle in the backfield. East Knox gonna be content just to take it into the break. I know Crestview's happy to sign up for a 20 point cushion as they head into the halftime locker room. What a performance so far by the Cougars in their home opener. Three touchdowns by Connor Morris. Barker's got another, and they lead right now 27 to seven. 
We'll step away when we come back. We'll be back with your J and F halftime break things down after a presentation of music from the Crestview Marching Band. That's all on the way on the other side of this commercial break. Keep it here live and free high school football on a Saturday night returns exclusively on the OH Report. The hospital delivers with three fellowship trained surgeons and coveted national rankings for four years running, all to help you beat the pain and heal faster. At Knox Community Hospital, we're elevating care. Kissel's Lawn Care. There's no job too big or too small for us to handle. With top-of-the-line equipment, we are guaranteed to complete your next landscaping job efficiently and professionally. A hard-working, dedicated team is what we take pride in, bringing to every job to make sure the results are the best they can be. So the next time you have a landscaping project that needs done, think smart and think Kissel. Hi, this is Brock Ross from the Danville office of the Kilbuck Savings Bank, and I want to wish the Danville Blue Devils all the best for a great season. And this is Dee Scott from the Apple Valley office of the Kilbuck Savings Bank, and I'm here to wish the East Knox Bulldogs an awesome season. We may root for different teams, but we are together in our efforts to service the financial needs of our neighbors and friends in the Knox County area. Supporting our community is even more important today. So contact me, Dee Scott, at the Apple Valley office. Or me, Brock Ross, at Danville. The Kilbuck Savings Bank, your community partner, Equal Housing Lender, member of FDIC.
Hi, this is Brock Ross from the Danville office of the Kilbuck Savings Bank, and I want to wish the Danville Blue Devils all the best for a great season. And this is Dee Scott from the Apple Valley office of the Kilbuck Savings Bank, and I'm here to wish the East Knox Bulldogs an awesome season. We may root for different teams, but we are together in our efforts to service the financial needs of our neighbors and friends in the Knox County area. Supporting our community is even more important today. So contact me, Dee Scott, at the Apple Valley office. Or me, Brock Ross, at Danville. The Kilbuck Savings Bank, your community partner, Equal Housing Lender, member of FDIC.
we close the show with the lead single from Nirvana's album Nevermind, released in 1991. This song was included in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame's list of the songs that shaped rock and roll. Give it up for the marching cougar pride as they play Smells Like Teen Spirit. Knox Community Hospital delivers with three fellowship trained surgeons and coveted national rankings for four years running, all to help you beat the pain and heal faster. At Knox Community Hospital, we're elevating care. Kissel's Lawn Care. There's no job too big or too small for us to handle. With top-of-the-line equipment, we are guaranteed to complete your next landscaping job efficiently and professionally. A hard-working, dedicated team is what we take pride in, bringing to every job to make sure the results are the best they can be. So the next time you have a landscaping project that needs done, think smart and think Kissel. Hi, this is Brock Ross from the Danville office of the Kilbuck Savings Bank, and I want to wish the Danville Blue Devils all the best for a great season. And this is Dee Scott from the Apple Valley office of the Kilbuck Savings Bank, and I'm here to wish the East Knox Bulldogs an awesome season. We may root for different teams, but we are together in our efforts to service the financial needs of our neighbors and friends in the Knox County area. Supporting our community is even more important today. So contact me, Dee Scott, at the Apple Valley office. Or me, Brock Ross, at Danville. The Kilbuck Savings Bank, your community partner, Equal Housing Lender, member of DIC.
It's halftime here at Ashland Community Stadium where after two quarters of action, we've got a 20-point cushion in favor of the Crestview Cougars. They're on top 27-7. Brian Skronsky, Garrett Parlett with you as we're breaking down the halftime stats heavily in favor of the Crestview Cougars. Of course, that makes a whole lot of sense. They've been getting it done on the ground, through the air. 181 total yards for Crestview and their defense been playing lights out so far. East Knox up to this point have capitalized on a short field just once, and that's been it. Yeah, Crestview's defense has been suffocating really the whole entire night. All night long, Crestview's defense has been suffocating. East Knox only 70 yards to their name, and Crestview has almost doubled that, or excuse me, tripled that. Crestview has really been feeding the rock to Connor Morris, and he's been getting the, the job done. He's got three scores today, so I'm sure Crestview is going to continue to try to run, uh, come out, run the ball, run the clock down, and get out of here with the W. Talks about the three touchdowns. Just to go back over the scoring, if you're just joining us at the 540 mark of the first quarter, Morris got into the end zone for the first time. Didn't take him too much longer after that. About three minutes later, two-yard touchdown plunge made it 13 nothing. It was 20 to 0 after Barker made a 25-yard reception at the beginning of the second quarter. Finally, East Knox will get on the board about six minutes later, halfway through the second, but Morris with the big 10-yard touchdown scamper right before the break, less than 50 seconds before the half. I think that's kind of been the game-changing play up to this point, the fact that Crestview was able to respond right after East Knox's only points of the game. That was pretty big, G-Man, right before the break. I think the East Knox offense really woke up. They got that score. But it's really been the defense that's been letting them down. Uh, Crestview's been running all over them tonight. So see if Cody Reese made some adjustments in the locker rooms to stop that rushing attack for Crestview. Because as we mentioned, the run, run, and then hit you with the play action pass. And that's where we've seen that Owen Barker touchdown come into play. Hayden Kuhn has been basically flawless so far. Just one incompletion so far on the night. Morris has done a ton of damage, looking like he's going to go over 100 yards when it's all said and done. He's got eight touchdowns now on the season. Goon, six touchdown tosses, so everything rocking and rolling in favor of the Crestview Cougars. We'll see if they can keep it up here in half number two. I always love third quarters of football because this is where coaches really make their money. This is where the good ones stand out. The adjustments. What do you do differently? What wrinkles did you say for the second half? Or what did you come up with on the fly with your guys talking to them in the locker room? Such a great part about football. This chess match that we're about to see here in the third quarter. Maybe Crestview saw a couple of things that they could take advantage of. Or maybe East Knox on the other side got a couple of wrinkles on the way here, G-Man. And they can get right, right back into the game. Uh, third quarter, I think always about my favorite quarter. Yeah, I'm sure Crest is going to continue to try to do what they've been doing throughout the entire game. But I talked to Coach Havitter earlier this week, and he mentioned that, you know, Kuhn, he, he's looked sharp so far early in the season, some below uh, average competition. But uh, he's done his job. He hasn't turned the ball over a lot. And he said that he doesn't get rattled very often. It's going to take a lot to get under a Hayden Kuhn's skin. And so far, nothing's been able to even get there. He, he's been dominating so far. He's been flawless, doesn't turn the ball over, gets it to his playmakers, gets it to his receivers, and obviously – can turn around and hand it off to that lead horse, uh, Connor Morse. And he's got the pedigree, of course. he got to learn under Big Brother, who now a big-time college athlete moving on. Um, Hayden, so he, he he's had the chance to at least work under and see what Ross Kuhn did the last couple of years as a starter, and I think that's probably had to have been pretty valuable for him. Uh, like when you look at when you get to the upper letter levels, like maybe in the NFL, you know, call, calling, you know, the Mannings calling each other. Maybe it's the same type of thing here. Hayden being able to call Ross and just trying to pick his brain, get a couple of tidbits and pointers as he moves into his first year as a starter, which so far off to a great start, looking like they could be 3-0 and by the end of the night here in their home opener. Well, they say all the time that varsity is very different than JV. I mean, it's a complete step in the, uh, a different direction. They're, they're, it's two completely different ball games. When you step on Friday night under the lights, a packed crowd, packed communities around, surrounding you, it, it's a lot different than being able to have somebody to look up to, especially your brother, you know, someone who's always going to be there regardless, but definitely for football, just to be able to call and be like, you know, I mean, how, how do you do this, how do you do that? And, uh, you know, Ross, one of the better QBs Crestview's had in recent years. I, I mean, he set his record at Crestview. He's got a lot of records there. So to be able to have somebody like that on your hip to call and be able to ask questions, it's, it's pretty great to have. Crestview's going to kick it deep here to start the second half. So at least a good opportunity for East Knox to get their offense on the field right away. If you don't count 
the last drive where they just ran one play and then went into the half. They are coming off of a score, so see if they can snowball some things and get some momentum rolling in their favor on the offensive end. Certainly helps get some nice field position like they did on their scoring drive. Not going to happen here, though not bad, as they're going to set up shop at the 33-yard line. And it really started with the run game from East Knox on that scoring uh, drive they had, Brian. Got it to cold the lotter on multiple occasions, and the O-line really dominated up front. So let's see if East Knox either goes back to the running game with the lotter or opens it up with Peyton Lester, gets it out to playmakers like Carson Steinmetz and Shane Nepp. My gut tells me the Bulldogs are going to have a little bit more success in the aerial attack here in half number two than they did through the first couple of quarters. But on first down, it's the Lauder trying to bounce it to the outside, just not able to do so because number three, Connor Morris, got him down low by the ankles, able to bring him down. It was definitely a hole there, so here is the replay of the handoff to Cold the Lauder. Maybe the weather might be an impact here, Brian, in the second half on both squads on the passing game. The rain is beginning to pour down, so they get a – Easy chunk of yardage there for the Bulldogs on first down. Four receiver set. Trips to the left side here as Lester throws it out that way. And Steinmetz drilled in the backfield. It almost looked like Raymer was blocked into him. Just a perfect storm right there for Crestview to drop him for a loss. Yeah, if you're Peyton Lester, you got to put this out in front of Carson Steinmetz. The ball is thrown behind him, forcing him to turn around, and, man, Addison Raymer just blows this play up completely and just forces the play right there. But you got to get that ball out in front and let him get upfield. Can't throw it behind him. It really just ruined the whole play. We saw back in the second quarter that exact play call led to the biggest gain so far that East Knox has had. Nothing doing that time. Loss of two, so it's quickly third and long. The yards to gain is the 43 and a half. Lester breaks the pocket, uncorks one, into coverage, and it's going to be knocked down, almost intercepted on the play. Looked like Smedley had the coverage, and it's going to be a quick three and out for the Bulldogs. Not the start that you want if you're a fan watching in Howard. Definitely not the start you want. Peyton Lester had a teammate down the field wide open was Dylan Moreland. Coming across the field, Peyton Lester had a flush out, wasn't able to see him, had to try to force it in, make a play, wasn't able to do so, and East Knox will punt it on fourth down. It's going to be bobbled just a little bit by the lotter. He's able to get off a nice punt, though. Morris bobbles it, and it's loose. It's going to be scooped up by the Bulldogs, and they're in business. Nep with the fumble recovery, and they've got it at the 29. That's something you can't do if you're Connor Morris. Just let that thing go, man, especially with these conditions. East Knox players right there on your hip. Let that let that one go and, you know, live the fight another day. But beautiful play, beautiful special teams play right here from the Bulldogs, you know. Nice pop right there from the defender. I believe that is Shane Nepp who picked that one up for East Knox, and they're going to take the, this offensive series. And now they got good field position, Brian. Can't ask for much more. If you're the offense now from getting set up here, it's a little bit of a gift. And on first down, looks like they're trying to go for something big, airing it out to the end zone, way under thrown, and a huge stick. Nap got drilled by Morris at the end of the play. But, man, did he have a step if Lester could have led him towards the end zone. That was about 10 yards under thrown. Not sure if Lester got hit on this play or not. We'll see on this replay. Looks like that is Ringler there. I'm not sure if Ringler was able to get to him, but maybe these conditions, windy down there, with, especially with the rain, so a little underthrown, and Connor Morris had to break that one up. Mother Nature certainly going to be a factor throughout this second half. Got a little bit of a side rain coming down here from the south. As they keep it on the ground here, DeLauder, jump cut. Stacked up after a gain of about five. Third down on the way for the Dogs. And East Knox, this little ISO to the right side has really been working all night ever since that drive they scored on. See if they continue to do so. Open it up in the aerial attack. Lester from the 30. Steps back. Five-step drop, and now he's just got to take off and run. Brought down from behind. He's going to be two yards shy 
So fourth down on the way here for East Knox, and the offense in all likelihood going to stay on the field. I think you have to at this point. Third quarter, got to get a touchdown here. If you're East Knox, got to go for this and see if you can get it the first down. They're going to bring in John Mazza for a bigger personnel package on fourth down and a short two. As Lester looks over to the sideline for the play call, looks like they're going to make a little bit of an adjustment. And they're going to hand it off right side to Lauder, fighting for extra yardage, and he's able to muscle his way for a fresh set. Ended up getting five yards, actually, on the carry. Tremendous effort right there from the Lauder, getting behind his pads and getting behind his old lineman and getting that first down to live the fight another day. So the Bulldogs extend the drive as they're in the red zone for the second time this evening. First down from the 16. DeLotter again gets the call. Continues to drive those legs, but Crestview just has not allowed any real big gaps here tonight. They've done a good job of swallowing up the run game. I don't think they've had a run over maybe five, six yards all night. Yeah, it's really been these short chunk plays for East Knox. That's been able to get them to third and short and fourth and ones. But Crestview really, the bend don't break mentality, not letting anything up or anything over the top. East Knox had that opportunity for Shane Nepp down the sideline, but that was broken up by Addison Raymer and Connor Morse. Lester with two receivers to each side. They're going to roll the pocket out to his right. He's going to fire to the end zone to the back. Big jumping effort made by Nepp, but the coverage was there, and Crestview stands tall. Smedley locked up on the one-on-one, -on -one, as you'll see here on the scout construction replay, getting it done. That was a beautiful ball from Peyton Lester. Put it out in front of his wide receiver. Let only Shane Nepp be able to go up and get that one, and just right off the fingertips right there from Shane Nepp. And Crestview's defense back to another third down. Looked like Smedley perfectly timed that one, too. The collision happened right on the arrival of the ball. Excellent defense there from Gabe. And it brings up third down and seven now for the Dogs. Crestview bringing the heat straight up the middle. Lester has to evade, just skips it. In front of the intended target, that was Steinmetz. So it's going to be another fourth down, and looks like it's going to have to be more gambling here for these dogs. What a great play call from the defensive coordinator, Tim Scheid from Crestview, dialing up that blitz, forcing Peyton Lester to get uncomfortable and flush out to the right. And he wasn't able to play make right there and get it to his wide receiver. So it's going to be fourth down, and looks like East Knox is going to elect to keep the offense on the field. Gavin Keynes checks in for the Cougars. Going to play defensive end, get a little bit more speed there off the edge rush. As Lester fires to the end zone, is it caught? Did Nett bring it in? No signal yet. Officials discussing. The Bulldogs certainly think they've scored. Nobody has made a signal, G-Man. Will somebody please <laughs> tell me what's going on? No signals from the ref. I think there's going to count as a touchdown, Brian. No need to signal, so Shane Nepp. Is going to get the touchdown catch from Peyton Lester, but <laughs> what a call right there, man. Take some guts. I believe that was over fourth and ten. Rolled out to the right, Peyton Lester, with a dime to, dime to Shane Nepp. And it's going to be a 14-point deficit for the Bulldogs, pending the PAT, which that is good. 13-point ball game here, Brian, in the third quarter with 7.37 to go. Well, you see there on the replay, we've got Nepp with the football, so we know that he at least brought it in. But the official there on the far sideline that was playing the pylon, he literally looked at the play and then walked off. He didn't make a signal one way or the other. He went over to discuss with the other officials. If you're Crestview's coaching staff, I want some answers here, man. Right. That's uh, you, you got to be able to signal that and make make sure that, you know, Shane Nepp was be able to hold held on to the ball and it didn't touch the ground, but. Looks like it was a unanimous no Crestview player really threw their hands up, but that is a first. Definitely I've never seen a referee not signal whether it was a touchdown or incomplete pass. We're going to try to dial up and show you that full play here in just a second. 
which nobody doubts that Shane Nepp made the catch. It's just, let me know if you're the official. Put those two hands up. I at least made the touchdown hands in here when they lined up for the PAT, so I'm trying to let the stadium know from up in the press box. Typically, the Zebras are the ones making that call, though, Gene. Right. Uh, maybe, we, maybe we didn't see it. Maybe he called it a little too early, and we weren't able to see it. But on the replay, man, it looks like there was no signal. So East Knox, man, they got up to the line of scrimmage and kicked that PAT quick. Don't blame them. It's one of those situations, like in the NFL, where you don't want the replay. You just hustle up to that right. line. You get it off. So the Bulldogs making things interesting as Nep, at least as far as we know, Making a touchdown grab. That's how it's going to go down and told in the history books anyways. On the return here for Bryce Perkins. Is going to bring Crestview out to the 30-yard line. Or excuse me, I think that was Michael Mays on the return. And here is the replay on the way. So I guarantee you, you're not going to see a call from the official. But can we get a good enough look at Shane Nepp on this catch. Oh, okay. We got the so call. So the official in the middle of the field. But it was such a short. Yeah. I mean, he a, he short armed that. He <laughs> gator armed that one on us. It was a three second quick up and down. <laughs> no hesitation. And I think no question about that. that that's a completed yep. ball too. Definitely. So Shane Nepp with the 13 yard touchdown grab there with 7.37 to go in the third quarter. Now puts a little bit of pressure on Crestview as you see the rain starting to fall from the sky here at Community Stadium. Can the Cougars continue to move the ball like they have so far throughout the night offensively? I think they've only been stopped once so far when they've had possession. This weather definitely helps in favor of the Cougars. 260 yards per game on the ground, and it's been mostly this guy right here, Cotter Moore, taking it to the left side and making multiple defenders miss, but East Knox converges. Looks like they got a little bit of momentum, Brian, a little bit of mojo back in their step. Getting touchdowns oftentimes will do that. It'll spark you a little bit on defense, make you play a little bit harder, more aggressive, feeling like they're going to get back into the game. Nice cut there by Morris to get to the outside before he's driven down by the linebacker, bringing up a third down and five. Big play here for both sides. If you're Crestview, a chance to kind of break up some of that momentum if they can get five yards here. As Kuhn airs it out. He's got his guy. Smedley with the catch out near midfield. Tremendous route right there from Gabe Smedley. Just reading the defense perfectly. Sitting down in the zone and was wide open. Hayden Kuhn with a beautiful pass and a beautiful ball out to his wide receiver. Great play here. Move in the pocket. Awesome protection once again. And then just zips it. In between the zone coverage, Smedley there brings it in. As sure a hand as you'll find in the Firelands Conference. And then here's Morris following in behind his blocker. Still running. How about Morris out for another big burst? Out to the 34-yard line. Squeezes right up through the hole, Brian and Connor Morris, man. As soon as he sees daylight, he is off to the races, taking multiple East Knox Bulldog defenders with him. I mean, he's got four guys there, Brian, trying to bring him down, and they finally do, but... Crestview, once again, man, they, they respond quick. As soon as they let the defense let the touchdown up, it doesn't matter. Crestview's offense head down and back to work. This is what they did after the previous EK touchdown. They marched right down the field. They put up a TD of their own. Can they do it again? Can they match and keep stride? As that's a big hole right there, right side. And the ground game, churning up a whole lot of yards here for the Cougars on this drive as they're getting closer to the red zone again. Not only can Connor Morse run the ball, Brian, but he was the lead blocker on that play and pushed Cole DeLotter about five or six yards down the field. Here you go. As you see it, man, takes the contact and just continues to drive those legs. Ooh. And Man, what a ball player Connor Morse is, man. Morris having a heck of a night. Certainly the front runner right now for our MVP. Single receiver set. Here's Morris. Big burst to the outside. He's going to jet it, and nobody... I don't think he's going to catch him until he gets to about the two. I thought he was going to take that thing clean down the sideline, but an excellent job to be able to catch up with him and actually force him out. Bring up first and goal, though, for Crestview. Man, Brian, I could have ran through this hole. It was so big. I mean, wow. just wide open. Noah Stewart, the lead blocker, and then just makes two East Knox Bulldog defenders miss. I think he ran out of gas here on the – maybe if that was a first drive, he might have scored there, but – 
Connor Morseman, heck of an effort here on this drive. Finally brought down by Blake Elliott Lester as well, coming in to make that stop. But at least three or four chances here. Morris, does he only need one? First down and he's in there. Two yard touchdown run. Connor Morris extends the lead once again. Man, Brian, not one, not two, not three, but four touchdowns here for Connor Morris and there's still 442 remaining in the third quarter. This guy might get to five or six, Brian, by the end of this puppy, but Connor Morris, man, has definitely got to be the MVP so far this game for Crestview. Doing it all out here for the Cougars and banged up a little bit in that second quarter, too. Has not slowed him down, not one tick. As Holloway's on for the PAT. Looking to push this back out to a 20-point cushion. He'll do just that. So with 4.42 to go in the third quarter, it's 34-14. Cougars finding an answer on the other end. They're picking up that phone every time someone calls, G-Man. It's ringing, and they're picking it up. See if East Knox can do the same. We all knew that Cody Reese and his staff was going to draw something up out of the halftime, after the halftime break. We knew East Knox wasn't going to quit. They came down. They got the early touchdown here in the third quarter, but Crestview Man responded almost instantaneously. So East Knox has got to answer that bell themselves. Got to be impressed with what we've seen from Crestview. Certainly the offense here tonight. They've had possession, I believe, six times. They've ended up with five touchdowns so far. But the blocking up front, that was one of our keys to victory. We thought East Knox would have the size advantage up on the front line. But so far, them holes that have been opening up across the front line for the Cougars, all the love there has to go to that offensive front getting out there, creating space, and then even in the passing game too, keeping a clean pocket for Kuhn when they're moving him to the perimeter. It's all gone really well so far for the offensive unit for Haverdale and company. Yeah, they've had some gaping holes for Connor Morris and Wade Bowling to run through, and that's really been the driving factor to the offense. It's really been the gear to their engine. But so far, man, East Knox has got to respond here offensively. they got to drive down, and they have to get six because you get the ball back to Crestview, man, they might put, in, put it in, and that might be game over. So... I don't think anybody really was expecting this, to be honest. I thought that we all thought this was really going to be a close game, but Crestview is running away with it here in the third quarter. As the rain continues to fall, it's going to make it a little bit more challenging for the Bulldogs to try to make a comeback here. But that has been their style, getting it done through the air so far during the season. We'll see if they can do it with decent field position. Doesn't look like it this time with Nep. Bobbling the catch, and then only able to get out to the 20-yard line. So Lester trots back out onto the field, coming off of a touchdown drive on the previous one. Can they continue to match the offensive output that's been displayed so far by Crestview? He's not a passing offense. The weather not playing into their favor tonight. Strong winds and obviously a wet ball. So he's not got to find something here quick, already halfway through the third quarter. Bring a man in motion, just keep it on the ground. To Lauder, chopped down right at the line of scrimmage, able to fall forward for a gain of two. See if East Knox picks up the tempo here. Time is beginning to run out, obviously. Still got the latter half of this quarter and then a whole fourth quarter, but down multiple scores here. And Crestview's offense doesn't seem like they're going to be taking their foot off the gas. So see if they can pick up the tempo here offensively. Dogs spread him out again. See if Lester likes to take a shot. Haven't seen him try to go deep much tonight. Instead, he's just going to shovel pass it out. And it's going to be another minimal gain here for DeLauder. Actually, he was able to pick up about five on that one. So it at least makes it third and manageable. The line to gain is the 30. Crucial third down here for both sides. Crosby wanting to get the ball back and really put this one away, but see if East Knox likes to run the ball again with Cole DeLauder.
Cougar stack in the box. Showing seven up front. They do bring some heat. is going to be met and dropped shy of the 30-yard line. Fourth down will be on the way for the Bulldogs. And with a 20-point differential up on the board, I imagine Cody Reese going to keep his offense out there, try to churn out a yard. But, boy, is this a big play on both sides. If you get it for East Knox, all it does is keep the drive alive for Crestview. Even a little bit more valuable if you can get set up with excellent field position and get your offense back onto the field. And this Crestview defense, see if they can stand up and get a stop here. Give it back to the offense and see if they can put this one away. I'm sure East Knox is going to try back up the middle of the cold to and they might be able to trick some people, maybe go with a little air attack. Well, how about that? Actually, they're going to move the chains, G-Man. They just gave them a fresh set of downs over on the far sideline. I saw the chain gang on the move. So they got a little bit more of a favorable spot on the far side than they did here on the near side. As the official that was closest to the ball clearly had a mark shy of the 30. So a bit of a break for the Bulldogs. And they'll keep it on the ground for two more here on first. This defense for Crestview has really been standing tall. And it's crazy how they put their linebackers right behind some of their defensive tackles. They run that stack defense. Briar Godsey, really the engine of it, as you see him walking up to the his D lineman right here, going to stack right behind him. See what the Cougars do here. Incomplete. Steinmetz, the intended target. Nice coverage being made on the play there by Raymer. And what this 3-3 stack allows you to do is put a lot of speed out on the perimeter. Six defensive backs and safeties out there. Certainly translates favorably, I think, for Crestview against a team like East Knox that likes to put it up through the air and spread you out. So when it's, uh, you know, your game plan against theirs so far, Cougars have proven to have a little bit better strategy here. As East Knox facing a third down, and Nate loading up, going deep as Lester. It's way overthrown off the fingertips of the defensive back, and it looked like the wideout just kind of stopped running on the play as Raymer continued, just wasn't able to haul it in. Yeah, not sure what happened here, a little bit of miscommunication, but Lester, I believe, thought it was a corner route, and Shane Knapp broke it off. He just quit running, and Addis Raymer almost got there, Brian, for the interception. I think I understand, though, what Nepp was thinking. If you put that on the back shoulder, he's wide open, right. able to pick up about 20 yards on the play. Lester just bombed that thing, as this is going to be a punt that, again, is misplayed by Morris. But he's able to dive on it this time, so Crestview's offense back out onto the field on the 25 with a chance to pretty much seal things up here. If they can drive down and get another touchdown, that's going to be lights out here at Community Stadium, and we're looking at a 3-0 start for Crestview. Sure, they're going to try to churn some of that time too. Get out of this third quarter, get in the fourth quarter, run the ball with Connor Morse, pick up another touchdown, pick up another score, and walk out of this one with a win before they move into Fireland's Conference play. Tight formation. Cougars run right into the teeth of the defense. Looks like Mazza coming up to make the stop along with Lester. Not a ton there for Wade Bowen. But what's most important for Crestview right now is the clock starting to become their friend. Down under a minute to go in a fast-moving third quarter. As Kuhn hands off again, Bowen on second down. Trying to bully his way forward, but hit met right at the line of scrimmage and knocked down for no gain on that play. See if Crest use a luck. Let this one run out and get into the fourth quarter. I'm sure they will. But heck of a showing here tonight so far, Brian, for Crestview. Big time win if they can pick this one up, barring any kind of miracle from East Knox. But we know those Bulldogs, Brian, they do not quit regardless of the scoreboard. I'm sure they're going to try their hardest to get back into this one. 
This is going to take us into the fourth quarter of action. So money time on the way here on the OH Report. Crestview facing a third down when we return right after this. Hi, this is Brock Ross from the Danville office of the Kilbuck Savings Bank, and I want to wish the Danville Blue Devils all the best for a great season. And this is Dee Scott from the Apple Valley office of the Kilbuck Savings Bank, and I'm here to wish the East Knox Bulldogs an awesome season. We may root for different teams, but we are together in our efforts to service the financial needs of our neighbors and friends in the Knox County area. Supporting our community is even more important today. So contact me, Dee Scott, at the Apple Valley office. Or me, Brock Ross, at Danville. The Kilbuck Savings Bank, your community partner, Equal Housing Lender, member of the IC. Knox Community Hospital delivers with three fellowship trained surgeons and coveted national rankings for four years running, all to help you beat the pain and heal faster. At Knox Community Hospital, we are elevating care. Punt team out on the field for Crestview to open up quarter number four. And it's going to be a deep punt. As Nepp has to backtrack all the way to his own 27. Makes a nice move, but a good burst there by the coverage team to swallow him up before he was able to catch that sideline. Well done there by the Cougars. Tremendous punt. Return coverage from the Cougars right there. One of the one of the drives East Knox had was really sparked from a great return from Shane Nepp, but right there, Crestview got to him. Looked like he had a hole, but nothing there as the Cougars converge. Big drive coming up for the Bulldogs. They've got to get points on the board every time they touch the football from here on out. Looks like the rain starting to dissipate just a little bit as they swing it out to Steinmetz. And like Houdini able to evade the tackler. Not sure how he evaded Gabe Smedley on that one, but it turns out to be a nice gain for him. Curious why East Knox hasn't went to those bubble screens more often. It's worked almost every single time they've done it and they got it out to Steinmetz. That was a perfect ball placement. It makes Gabe Smedley miss once again and takes it for a big chunk of yardage. Bulldogs going with a no huddle now. Low snap taken by Lester. Rolls out here to the near side. And he's going to skip that one. Trying to find Moreland here on the near sideline, but it's going to be incomplete. Bring up a second and ten. Looks like they dialed up a bubble and go. Great defense from the Cougars to stay home. And throw was almost there, but wide receiver couldn't come up. The ball was out of bounds. So East Knox picking up the tempo here. Might be a little too late, but they can get this one quick. Only down two scores. Might be able to make some noise. Four wideouts all in tied here. And then they're going to throw it out to the edge. And again, it's Steinmetz. Throws a spin move, but doesn't take him anywhere. Forced out of bounds on the far sideline by Raymer. It'll be third down and short for the Bulldogs as they've now broken into Cougar territory. Finally beginning to open up the passing game, and so far it is working. Out to Carson Steinmetz. Hit the B button, Brian, but wasn't able to get it to go as Addison Raymer with a nice tackle to push uh, the offense player out of bounds. Steinmetz has been the entire offense so far in this drive with a couple of catches. Though this time Lester going to do it himself. 
Moving the chains forward down to the 40 of the Crestview side. Look like a design run all the way. The lot are leading with the block. And Lester picking up about six yards. He knocks back up to the line of scrimmage quickly. Lester airing it out for Steinmetz, and I think just put a little bit too much air under it, and it's going to be picked up. And it's going to be taken back 50 yards all the way for a touchdown. Addison Raymer to the house for the Cougs, and that's a game changer. Threw up the deuces too, Brian. No mercy for the Hall of Fame CPU. Addison Raymer with a beautiful play. Right place, right time. Was really curious, Brian, if they were going to call that a catch or not, but they are going to elect to, and it will be a fumble. Scoop and score for the Cougars as they converge. And Tanner Moore, make sure no East Knox Bulldogs are getting to his buddy, Addison Raymer, with a scoop and score touchdown. Biggest play of the night as he pieces out into the end zone. Raymer shutting the door on a potential East Knox comeback and tough break for Carson Steinmetz who had made the last two big plays for the Bulldogs on that drive. It looked like he did get, wow, look at that one donking and going through for Holloway. Make it a 41-14 game. You know it's your night, Brian, when plays like that happen in Holloway. Not the double doink, just the one doink up through the uprights it goes as Crestview has now up their advantage 41-14 to over the Bulldogs. And that's, man, that's so close. I, I would actually probably call that one incomplete, but when it happens in real time, you know, it can go either way. It looked like Steinmetz hit basically right after he pulled in the ball, and the beneficiary right there, of course, Crestview and Addison Raymer, the junior, taking it down the near sideline, and nobody was going to catch him. What a home opener here for Crestview. So many questions about this team heading into the season and then even into week three after you look at the competition, they were able to beat Loudonville, a team that still looking for their first win on the season, 45-25 in week one. Last week, beat a Bucyrus squad that has one win on the season. They bounced them 54-7. to Weren't quite sure what it was going to look like when they got up against a team like East Knox that's been in the playoffs over the last several seasons, but... Boy, have they really answered a lot of questions, I think, here tonight and proven that when they get into Firelands Conference play next week, and boy, do they have a big one going up against 3-0 Western Reserve on the road. But I think that they've proven that they're going to be up for the challenge. They got a team of gamers out here pretty much across the board. Not a lot of people picked in to win this game, Brian, and here they are with a big advantage here early in the fourth quarter. But they got a big one next week, as you mentioned, at S uh, Western Reserve, who's also 3-0. So the battle of the unbeatens again, but this time it is Firelands Conference play. So the play is definitely going to be amped up a little bit, lifted up to another level. And then they got Monroeville after that. And Monroeville lost a few games this year, but they're definitely still a well-coached squad and a very good team in the Firelands Conference. See what kind of fight the dogs have left in them. Challenge by 27, and that didn't fool anybody. Big tackle in the backfield by Gavin Cairns. What a play from the Crestview defense right here is just sprinting right through the gap, read the play immediately, and just stopped Shane Nepp in his tracks. I believe that was Briar Godsey. Yeah, that's right. Coming right off the defensive tackle, right into the backfield to make the stop in the backfield. gotzi has been rock solid tonight. All three linebackers really played their role well here this evening. Clean pocket. Lester just has to dump it off. He's got a completion and big stick applied to Cole DeLotter here on the near side. Caden Cunningham delivering the blow. Caden Cunningham, just another one of those skill positions, Brian, that really can get it done and really can fly. Great wide receiver he is, but showing it on the defensive end with a stick. It just looks a little bit more filthy. When you got that long salad hanging out the back and it's just floating, flying out there in the wind, just looks like you're moving a little bit faster than you actually are, G-Man. I, I, I kind of like the look for football, for sure. 
which maybe, you know, Lesser kind of lost some of his power perhaps when he got that haircut. I'm sure he's looking sharp. The ladies love it down there in Howard, but the football game might be suffering a little bit, not hanging out of the back where it just gives you a little bit of confidence, I think. We'll, we'll have to talk to him about that as the year goes along. Look, he's really got it trimmed up real tight on yeah. the back now. Yeah, last year it was, you know, flying out in the wind, almost hitting his jersey number, Brian, but For now sure. seen him on the field earlier before the game. And uh, he's got it trimmed up, nice clean fade. So I don't know, maybe that was, <laughs> maybe that could have been the reason. At least looking to get some type of momentum here over the last nine minutes and change of the game. Going to week four with more confidence. That's not gonna help. Just absolutely face planted in the backfield by Gotzi, who just continues to keep reading the gaps and get in there quickly. And a lot are unable to make the catch anyways. Got to try to get something offensively here for East Knox. Something to build off of. Build off of before they go into conference play. The K-Mac, they got a tough opponent, of course, if they'll be able to play Centerburg due to COVID. But, you know, Centerburg, their first two games, man, they dominated on all cylinders. Trojans unable to play last night, as mentioned, because of COVID outbreak on the team. But they're hoping to return to action, get back on the practice field by Wednesday, according to their athletic director. So if they can practice, that will be the opponent for East Knox next week. And then after that, Bulldogs get some more home cooking against Cardington Lincoln, a one and two squad on the season. So the K-Mac, perhaps a bit top heavy this year. As you look at Centerburg and Northmore, the lone two undefeateds left as it appears that East Knox is going to drop from the ranks of the undefeateds. Firelands Conference, going to be super intriguing. Four teams still unblemished. So that's half of the conference, G-Man, at 3-0 and as we're reaching the point of conference play. It's going to be a really exciting battle, I think, throughout the entire league. Could go all the way down to Week 10, Brian, where Crestview will play Plymouth. That could be the deciding game for the Firelands Conference, but I think Crestview you got to tip their hat to them, man. They have looked very sharp tonight. They really haven't done anything at all, you know, in their favor. They've done nothing to damage their, their points. You know, they, they've really dominated the whole entire night. They haven't had a miscue. It's really been Cougars all night long as East Knox is going to get the blind side block on the Cougars. And that's just the second penalty on the night on either side, both of them going against Crestview. So you do have to give some credit for at least a well-played, clean game on each side of this football matchup because we haven't had to see the officials come out here and make too many calls. Not a lot of laundry on the field here tonight, Brian. So both teams very well coached. No flags on the field today. Very well clean, well coached game. So the Bulldogs are gonna break into the red zone, try to get some points on the board. Put a little bit of pressure on Crestview. That's Lester plenty of time, but now how about three black jerseys all coming after him? He's able to sidestep a fourth, still running as Lester. And he spun down and all that just for about a gain of two. But, man, that's an exciting two-yard gain. Crestview swarming to the ball, but, man, he took a defender's ankles, Brian, right there with the juke to the right. See it on this replay with the spin out. And then right wow. here on the end, Briar Gotzi, man, just made Ooh. him fall. And tremendous move, but, man, did the, Cougar, the Cougars converge. Seven Crestview players had a <laughs> shot at him there. Actually only ended up being in a one-yard gain. As Lester fakes it this time, trying to catch the edge. And, whoa, looked like a WWE slam right there from Morris. Met rudely. Oh, man, heart over hype, man. Connor Morse, the little guy out there doing whatever it takes, not only on offense but on the defensive end too. That man has got some strength to him. I don't think there's any question about it. He is going to be our MVP of the night. So Connor going to join us for a conversation about the big win here over East Knox after these last seven minutes, 20 seconds. Milk off the clock. See if we get some more points, though, in the meantime. Lauder. Brought down by four Cougars on the play. Surprised to see some of the starters still out there for Crestview, especially like Briar Godsey coming off of injury. See if Coach Haverda likes to pull him out and sit him down to, you know, reinsure that he'll have them the rest of the year. 
quick thank you to all of our sponsors that allow us to bring you coverage live and free, including Kissel's Lawn Care, Spraying and Painting, the Killbuck Savings Bank, Knox Community Hospital, Scout Construction LLC, and Mazza's Restaurant. Thank you so much to each and every one of our sponsors tonight. As fourth down, big catch for the dogs. Athletic grab there to keep the drive alive. How about Shane Nepp giving up the body? Looks like he's walking a little bit gingerly, taking a pop in the back there. Excellent grab, though, to have his Bulldogs set up first and goal from the seven. Tremendous catch from Saint Shane Nepp, and Peyton Lester just decided just to throw it up. He had nobody open, and Shane Nepp came down with it on a tremendous grab. So the Bulldogs threatening, coming out with that tight formation. Three back stacked up. DeLauder, the deep man, carries inside the five-yard line. So some big bodies checking in for Crestview to try to match now as Mitch Klein, 260-pound junior, makes his way into the middle of the defense. Looked like we had some movement along the defensive front. It's going to be encroachment against the Cougars. So the penalty only cost him about a yard and a half on the play. But does inch the Bulldogs a little bit closer to Pater. Nep the lead back, trying to open up a hole for the lotter, and he's in there. Touchdown, Bulldogs, at the 540 mark. And it gets it back to a three-score ball game. So some East Knox can take away from this one is that they get, was able to get the run game here to go tonight. Previous weeks, they haven't really went to it a lot, but Cole DeLotter has had himself a decent game here tonight. He's got two scores, so that's something East Knox can hang their hat on after tonight. DeLotter now with four rushing touchdowns on the season. He's got six overall. A couple of TD grabs for him, too, on the campaign. And the Dogs trim the gap back down to 20. 41-21. Onside kick, presumably on the way for the Dogs. So we take one more look at that touchdown run. Great job of opening up the outside for DeLotter just to be able to fall forward into the end zone. Excellent blocking by the dogs and trying to make things interesting here. Get this onside kick. They got to go quick, but never say never for the Bulldogs and that mentality. Small town, big dreams out there in Howard. Felt like they were going to have a fantastic year. One loss certainly is not going to define their season by any stretch. But they would love to try to put a little bit more pressure and heat here on Crestview. Try to turn up the heat on them if they can get an onside kick. And then get Lesser and company another opportunity with the ball. As the rain not coming down as hard as it was certainly in the third quarter. So chance to air it out a little bit easier for the Bulldogs if they can get possession back. We'll see. There is a look at the rainfall here. Mother Nature giving us some football weather in early September. And EK elects just to kick it deep. So the Crestview offense will be able to come out and try to run out as much clock as possible. So if East Knox can send and package up any blitzes to try to make Crestview uncomfortable, see if they can force a fumble, force a turnover, and get the ball back to Peyton Lester and company. Two tight ends set for Crestview. They keep it on the ground. Morris hammered. See, it's 
Driven backwards on the play, met basically right at the line of scrimmage. I think that might be the first time, Brian, we've seen Morris behind the line of scrimmage getting tackled by an East Knox Bulldog. Actually, three East Knox Bulldogs there all converged to make the stop. It looked like Burwell was the first to make contact. So for this defensive front of the dogs, pinning their ears back, you imagine they're coming full throttle every single play. Looks like they're showing blitz from the outside too. Steinmetz is going to try to come. And then knock down another minimal gain here on the carry. So it's quickly third down for the Cougars. Line to gain is the 46. See if Keener elects to maybe pass the ball here on third and long, third and medium to get Cressy that first down and really burn this clock. But taking a risk, though, if you do pass the ball and East Knox and force a turnover, get an interception, and might be able to take it right down the field and score. Kuhn just going to hand it off. Wise decision. Cleet Rogers on the carry. And I believe that Rogers is going to be real close to moving the sticks. Actually, he will. Big first down for Crestview because now you can drift about three, four more minutes off the clock at least. Crestview plays their, car their cards right. That probably should do it. Get another first down definitely will be the end of this one. Barring any kind of setback or barring any kind of turnover. On first down, they put it in the hands of Raymer. Excuse me, that's going to be Gage Bloodheart on the carry. Really, all these Crestview running backs run with a lot of power and run right behind their pads. Really granting the contact and wanting some of that contact to really bounce off and pinball off and get some more yardage. Gain of four by Bloodheart. Second down, he's got the give again. Nice burst. Half yard shy of first down yardage. And if the Cougars can just pick that up, that is going to seal the deal, and they are going to walk off this turf victorious in their home opener. And what a sight it's going to be when Crestview gets that turf laid at their place, G-Man. I believe by week eight they're expected to return home. Yeah, it's going to be an exciting uh, feat for Crestview to go home. And, you know, some of these seniors, they were told to – that they were going to get turf at the beginning of the season. Obviously, the some stuff, some stipulations were along with that, and they weren't able to get it. So they had to move over to Ashland, be able to get to go back home, and at least to play a couple of games on that field, some senior night games. So be great for the Cougars, and I'm sure they're glad here tonight. They got to play on the turf for the test, and they, you know, they definitely passed the test all here tonight. Cougars can basically just line up in victory formation at this point. Doesn't appear that East Knox is going to use any of their three remaining timeouts. As Kuhn puts it in the hands of Bloodheart. Makes a nice cut into the safety and then drop down at the 35-yard line, gain a six on the play. So with Crestview passing the test here tonight, we'll see how they do with a potentially bigger test next week, taking on Western Reserve on the road, who's already collected wins over Wellington, Margareta, and Edison. What a fun matchup that is going to be out there in Collins. 
Definitely have to send a camera up and get a highlight. Try to get a live stream of their game this past week against Edison. And unfortunately, they do not have internet up there, so we would not be able to bring you a live and free presentation of that contest. But definitely got to see the Cougars go toe-to-toe -to -toe with another 3-0 team in Western Reserve next week. Could be a Firelands Conference preview. Brian, who's going to be the champion if Western Reserve picks that one up? You know, go, they might be able to go undefeated and pick up that dub, but I guess time will tell. So Crestview, even though they said they weren't necessarily looking for revenge from that 2019 loss at the hands of East Knox in the playoffs, they at least get a little taste here. Here on what is considered their home opener at Ashland Community Stadium. 41-21, they take care of the Bulldogs to stay undefeated at 3-0. And, oh, and a big reason why, how about Connor Morris, the senior? Our Kissel spraying and painting MVP of the night. He's going to join us for an interview here after the break. We'll also get you guys some final stats, wrap things up from Community Stadium, the JNF postgame show. It's going to roll along after this, so keep it with us here on the OH Report. Hospital delivers with three fellowship trained surgeons and coveted national rankings for four years running, all to help you beat the pain and heal faster. At Knox Community Hospital, we're elevating care. Kissel's Lawn Care. There's no job too big or too small for us to handle. With top of the line equipment, we are guaranteed to complete your next landscaping job efficiently and professionally. A hardworking, dedicated team is what we take pride in, bringing to every job to make sure the results are the best they can be. So the next time you have a landscaping project that needs done, think smart and think Kissel. Hi, this is Brock Ross from the Danville office of the Kilbuck Savings Bank, and I want to wish the Danville Blue Devils all the best for a great season. And this is Dee Scott from the Apple Valley office of the Kilbuck Savings Bank, and I'm here to wish the East Knox Bulldogs an awesome season. We may root for different teams, but we are together in our efforts to service the financial needs of our neighbors and friends in the Knox County area. Supporting our community is even more important today. So contact me, Dee Scott, at the Apple Valley office. Or me, Brock Ross, at Danville. The Kilbuck Savings Bank, your community partner, Equal Housing Lender, member of FDIC.
We're now back with our player of the game presented by Kissel Spraying and Painting. We have got the senior standout running back and defensive back, Connor Morris. 20 carries, 110 yards, four touchdowns. I got to imagine that's a career high for you. How does it feel just to get in the end zone four times in one game? Uh, it feels amazing every time. You just, I, don't, I can't explain it. It's just a good feeling. Getting a big win here tonight. There was a lot of conversation about this being your first test. The competition wasn't great the first couple of weeks. Bulldogs, a team that's been in the playoffs the last few years. What do you think you guys did to be able to not just beat them, but you beat them pretty handily here tonight? Uh, we came out and gave everything we got. We didn't quit. We just we hard work. <laughs> we hard work. <laughs> I don't know. So, I mean, it's been a few years since you, you've really been the lead back. So, you came into this year, you behind Chase Shiva for a few years and Sage Bath. It's finally like this is your year to pop off. Were you expecting you to be able to do it at such a high clip? I mean, you have you average about 10 yards of carry. Uh, I don't really know. I, I feel like I would – I didn't expect this much, but I'm definitely happy I'm doing this much. But I don't know. It just feels good to do it. I didn't expect it at all. And then lastly, you guys said this wasn't a revenge game, but – do you really think that, or do you think it really was a revenge game? Because, I mean, it looks like you guys are playing out there with some serious emotion. Well, I would, it's not revenge, but it, it, it kind of <laughs> is. We, they're all nice kids. They're all, like, they're nice, and they're a good team, and just respect, we respect them. Well, you guys, 3-0 and on the season. You're going to be moving into conference play next week on the road against Western Reserve, also 3-0. and How exciting is it? Just with this Firelands Conference, four teams still unblemished in your guys' league. How much fun is it going to be getting to play some of these top-end teams and finding out what Crestview football is all about in 2021? It's definitely going to be some fun. I'm really excited to face the good competition and all that. And it's just going to be fun to have the good games and see who really is the best in Firelands Conference. And you guys, you told me after a big week one win against Loudonville that there was a lot of doubters in the offseason for you guys. You feel like you're earning respect with each passing week given what you guys have been doing? Yes, we're definitely earning respect time by time. And it feels good with the doubters and stuff. All right, our MVP of the night presented by Kissel's Lawn Care Spring and Painting. Connor Morris, another big performance man, a two-time MVP here on the OH Report. Appreciate your time, bud. Thank you. We'll step away and we'll be right back. Final stats on the way from Ashland. Kissel's Lawn Care. There's no job too big or too small for us to handle. With top-of-the-line equipment, we are guaranteed to complete your next landscaping job efficiently and professionally. A hard-working, dedicated team is what we take pride in, bringing to every job to make sure the results are the best they can be. So the next time you have a landscaping project that needs done, think smart and think Kissel. Knox Community Hospital delivers with three fellowship trained surgeons and coveted national rankings for four years running, all to help you beat the pain and heal faster. At Knox Community Hospital, we're elevating care. Hi, this is Brock Ross from the Danville office of the Kilbuck Savings Bank, and I want to wish the Danville Blue Devils all the best for a great season. And this is Dee Scott from the Apple Valley office of the Kilbuck Savings Bank, and I'm here to wish the East Knox Bulldogs an awesome season. We may root for different teams, but we are together in our efforts to service the financial needs of our neighbors and friends in the Knox County area. Supporting our community is even more important today. So contact me, Dee Scott, at the Apple Valley office. Or me, Brock Ross, at Danville. The Kilbuck Savings Bank, your community partner, Equal Housing Lender. Member of the IC.
Impressive performance here at Ashland Community Stadium by the Crestview Cougars. Taking care of East Knox, 41-21. to 21. They outduel the dogs and get a little bit of revenge here as they move to 3-0 and on the season. Take a look at the final stats of the night that really tell the tale of the game. And 273 total yards for the Cougs. They didn't have to really throw it at all in the second half. 100 pass yards for them. Hayden Coombe was vir virtually flawless because... Again, they didn't really have to go to him, Garrett, and the rush game was on um, on point for them. Again, really strong. So the Cougars doing what they wanted to do offensively and really clean game for both sides penalty-wise. Uh, Crestview just able to do what they wanted to do a little bit better than East Knox. Yeah, and I think the real, the real thing was that Crestview stuck to their game plan. They didn't have to go off script. They ran the ball with Connor Morris. He had four touchdowns, 110 yards, and that's really all they needed. They got him into the end zone multiple times. Then they got uh, Hayden Kuhn off to Owen Barker. But I think the biggest takeaway from this game is that Crestview is definitely going to be a threat in the finals conference. If not, they might have a chance to win it all. So Crestview tonight got it done against some tough competition, one of the better schools in the KMAC. So Crestview, I think, is the real deal. Yeah, they've proven that so far through three weeks of the season, still unblemished at 3-0. and And for East Knox, we heard about this vaunted passing attack that they had coming into tonight. And Peyton Lester didn't throw any interceptions, completed a high percentage of his passes. He came in 72% completion, six touchdowns. He now has seven on the season, no picks, but just wasn't able to, you know, run and gun the way that I thought that we were expecting him to do with the complementary pieces that they have on the outside. He wasn't able to hook up with the weapons, and I think that you've got to give a lot of credit to the speed of the Crestview secondary. Maybe took the Bulldogs, uh, you know, off balance a little bit. They weren't expecting that they weren't going to have any gaps available to throw into. Yeah, on that first drive, East Knox tried to throw the ball down the field, and they weren't able to get anything to go. Addison Raymer and Gabe Smelly did a great job on those wide receivers, really clamping them up. And then they went to the run game, and it sort of worked for a, a few drives. But then after that, the Crestview defense was way too stingy tonight to let East Knox get on the board and even really make this one a ball game. So for the Bulldogs, it may be a matchup with Centerburg, the defending KMAC champs next week. We'll have to find out if they are still restricted due to COVID. That's going to be a home game. So we will be down there in Howard if they are able to match up with the Trojans, who are 2-0 on the season. And for Crestview, as mentioned, they're moving on, going to go on the road against Western Reserve, another 3-0 team. Two exciting matchups coming up next week for both of these squads, G-Man. Tell me, what is your prediction for how they move forward? Uh, what, what's going to be the future for both these teams? Uh, East Knox going to be playing at Centerburg, a very tough school. They've really ran muck so far through their first two uh, schools they've played. But coming off the COVID, they may be a little, you know, out of shape. So East Knox, I'm sure they're going to rebound. They'll have a, a good year. This is definitely going to define their season, as you mentioned earlier. And Crestview, I mean, they got a tough task going up to Collins, Ohio take it on Western Reserve who just be a tough Edison school and shut them out so it's going to be definitely two hard schools for these teams to go and travel and play so I'm expecting Crestview to win that one but I guess we'll see later final score one last time here tonight 41-21 Crestview a big winner over East Knox as they get it done on the ground huge game from our MVP Connor Morris continuing to add to his gaudy total so far on the season. What a standout he's been, and I think really a lot of players have stepped up and been a surprise for Crestview after graduating 11 key seniors from a year ago, but the number have been called for these new players, and they are getting it done so far. I'd like to thank our incredible staff for bringing you tonight's game. Uh, Garrett Parlett, my partner tonight on the mic. Storm Blunchley was down on the field getting you those close-up shots. Jory Hollenbeck our top camera, and then Adam Thompson, our incredible director, producer here tonight, bringing up all the graphics, showing you the replays. My name is Brian Skorotsky. Want to thank all of our sponsors as well and let you know that we got plenty on the way on the OH Report next week, so make sure that you lock it in. We are the future of high school sports in the area, and we've got all the games on the way that you want to see. So long for now, tonight from Ashland Community Stadium.